talking bollocks and it's me it's your friend it's Howard H Smith yes back to talk some more bollocks with you and looking forward to it I am revved up today the sun is shining um, I had a good night's sleep I'm in my front room it's just you know beautiful sun splashing through the trees all sorts of autumn colours out the autumn colours there you go first fuck up is it autumn is it yeah Yes, yes it is, yes. No, not a fuck up. Ha ha, I fucked up by not fucking up. They, well, so welcome, welcome to the calamitous uh, gibbering of a man constantly on the edge of being a complete wanker. It's, um, it is Talking Bollocks with me, your host, as previously mentioned, Howard H. Smith. So let's do the intro. I am singer with uh, UK thrash metal band Acid Rain, active between 1987 and 1991, and then back from 2015. Um, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, acidrain.co.uk. I also do stand-up, keithplatt.co.uk. I've been busy doing a lot of comedy um, since I uh, spoke to you all last. And, of course, there's this podcast as well. Hello. And there is, of course, um, another way to, uh, to get hold of stuff that I do, which is sign up at patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith. Yes, I have a Patreon account. I sent my little begging letter out to you all. Did you all enjoy that? Did you get that? Did you see the message from H? Did you see it? Did you play it? Did, was, that, was it too short? Did you just think, oh, I'm not going to bother with that. What's he on about? You know, he probably just wants to borrow some money. Well, as it turns out, not borrow, keep. Um... So yes, um, uh, there is basically, there is talking bollocks extras to be had. Um, so there will be, there will be a few, well, the, the first one's going out uh, in a couple of days, 1st November, it's 30th of October as I uh, record this, and there is going to be, um, there's going to be additional bits and pieces going out. Um, there's also going to be, well, actually, if you sign up at Patreon, not only do you get all the Talking Bollocks extras, but you're all going to get, you're also going to get Acid Rain extras as well. So there'll be, there's going to be all sorts of bits and pieces going out. There's going to be pictures, video, uh, music. I know one thing you all need to get excited about is I, I am going to be making available um, a video of me singing... Um, uh, enter Sandman at a wedding, and it's a, it's a, it's great. Lots of drunk, terrible dad dancing going on. Uh, not by me, I might add. Although I do fuck up the second verse and manage to have the cord fall out of the mic as well. So um, anyway, there's going to be all sorts of bits and pieces. Often when I say on the podcast, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't tell a story with uh, with the names in it or anything like that. Then that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to do um, on the Patreon stuff. Um, so if you want to go there, it's Patreon, which is P A T. T R E O N Patreon.com forward slash Howard H Smith. And for just five dollars a month or five bucks a month, um, which is about three pounds fifty, um, you will get extras from the podcast. You're gonna get acid rain uh, extras as well. All the stuff shared there will be exclusive. Um, please don't share it, although I'm pretty much making it unshareable, but please don't don't share it anyway, because you know, it's supposed to be exclusive for you guys and um, I'm trusting everybody that I'm sending all this to so there is going to be um, there is going to be some stuff coming up there uh, on the first which is only available all of the stuff will only be available there also I want to get you guys involved in interviews going to let you know I'll be messaging my Patreon subscribers telling them who I'm going to be interviewing and if they have any questions and then there will be a, a you know so if you want to get involved in the interviews the way to do it is sign up at Patreon and you can submit your questions and there will be a, a, I will do Patreon um, interviews with everybody that I interview um, and that will exclusively go out there so if you want to get involved um, then do and it's a way as I've mentioned already it's a way of keeping advertising off the podcast um, although how anybody is going to really want to um, uh, advertise on my podcast cunt 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 I mean why wouldn't they um, but yeah uh, it, it keeps advertisers off the podcast it keeps the podcasts nice and long um, and um, because you know they, they all want them broken down into bite sized chunks and stuff like that so there you go um, it's a way of money monetizing the podcast I need to try and monetize everything in my life um, and that's it um, that's it that's enough it's enough begging from me that's nearly the first five minutes and it's just me basically with a virtual um, cap out going oh have you got price for a cup of tea mister um, so anyway um, now that's all done what has been happening in the world of metal since we last spoke well since we last spoke um, Machine Head have announced a night with Machine Head 
um, which according to Rob Flynn is not something um, uh, many bands can do, but we can. Uh, it's nice of him to speak out on behalf of all other bands. Um, so basically, yeah, you've got a whole night of a circle pit. You've got a whole night of Rob Flynn wanting to see a circle pit over there and a circle pit over there and let's circle pit. And maybe he might mention um, uh, a circle pit. You never know. Um, no, I, I, I don't know about anyone else, but, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, we're going to be playing. Sorry, it was a little bit of... Um, Jiggery pokery going on with the old um, uh, with the old uh, computer at the moment, so I'm not sure if this is even recording. Yeah, oh, no, it looks like it. It's sorted itself out. Okay, um, yeah, I don't know about anyone else, but I I find the thought of two and a half to three hours of Machine Head off putting. I'm I genuinely like you know ninety minute sets, decent support bill. That that would be great. You know, um, listening you know, a whole night of uh, of of Machine Head a whole night of it's because that's his singing delivery isn't it it's like I'm taking in a lot of breath between words because it makes me sound angry yeah, actually you can't sound, just sound knackered that sounded really weird you play that back that'd be a nice little <laughs> bit of ringtone um, god ringtone who uses those anymore shut up grandad um, but yeah, I just think a whole night of Machine Head. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you were all right actually. I mean, you know, I like the last album and everything, but yeah, there you go, there you go. Anyway, um, moving on to uh, um, a little story about your friend and mine, Gene Simmons. Um, this was this is a story Cameron told me on Facebook. Thank you, Cameron, and uh, he said it was okay to um, <laughs> to use this story. Uh, Cameron is actually a Kiss fan. And um, and this is his story. I'm going to read it verbatim. Um, he said, I'm a Kiss fan. There you go. But I uh, but I met Gene Simmons when he was filming the Channel 4 series. He was at Abbey Road Studios. I got my book signed and he said, hey, man, don't be selling this on eBay or anything. Ha ha ha. Next day, auctioned it for 85 quid. Boom. <laughs> now, uh, I, I love that story. I think that's awesome. I just can't believe the cheek of Gene. I would charge for oxygen if I could. The man who said everything is copyrightable, the man who tried to copyright the devil horns is telling somebody else not to do a bit of business. I mean, you know, that should have been, hey, you want to sell this on eBay, get as much as you can for it, dude. Um, but of course, no, because Gene would want his cut, wouldn't he? Of course, there you go. That's that's the angle I was missing. Gene would want his, his fucking, well, probably brought about 75%, wouldn't he? Yeah. Actually, you'd end up owning. You'd end up owing him. Basically, is how it would work. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, thanks for that, Cameron. Liking your stuff. Um, what else we got? Ah, oh, a new Primus album. Um, and uh, yeah, the Desaturating Seven. I heard a couple of preview tracks. Well, preview. They're on YouTube. I mean, fucking any- <laughs> anyone can hear them. You know, it's nothing special. Um, and um, and I was I was excited. I thought, oh, this sounds a bit. It's the original lineup. Their first album since '96. I thought, right, okay, this this could be pretty darn cool. Um, and um, yeah, oh dear. I mean, I, it's just there's a, there is two or three songs on there, including the two that I'd already heard, which uh, which I like. But for the vast majority, there was. I mean, there's seven minute songs on there, and from what I can tell. There's two and a half minutes of song and five minutes of random noises. Um, and I really like uh, Primus. I actually got into Primus on their first album before it was released on a label. I got it on Prawn Song Records, which was their, self, their self-financed their self release. Um, I actually got that in Jumbo Records in York. Jesus Christ. That's got to be over 30 years ago, which is quite scary. Um um, God, I sound so old. Um, and um, but I don't feel it. That's the main thing. Um, and I, I, I don't know. It's just th- that album. Um, Frizzle Fry is a genius follow up. Um, and then you've got um, Sailing Seas of Cheese, which was not quite as good. And then Pork Soda, which was when they started going just for me, just a bit too weird. And after that, yeah, I just kind of. Um, I just kind of wandered off really and I thought this might be the album to bring me back um, but unfortunately 
no, no, it isn't. Never mind. Anyway, um, yeah, oh, there's something else. Um, I, I know, I'm, actually, no, I'm going to, I'll talk about that in a bit. Sorry, sorry. Um, so Avenged Sevenfold have an, an, uh, an exciting announcement. Um, I haven't actually followed up to see what it is or if they, even if they've made it. I was just hoping it would be splitting up. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it, it seems like they're, they're, they're staying together. So, um, well, that was worth mentioning, wasn't it? Um, and then uh, there, there seemed to be a battle of the 80s going on where um, Sebastian Bach continues his war, wars, war of words with Michael Sweet of Striper. I mean, you know... Sebastian Bach said Striper still sucks. Now, I mean, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm not one to disagree with that statement, but I just think Sebastian Bach and Michael Sweet arguing in the press, it's just, it is a bit, you know, guys, you've had your time, you know, come on. <laughs> I don't know, but, but it's getting them some press. But then um, Michael Sweet recently came out and said that the next Striper album is going to be shocking and extremely controversial. For a start, you can't have extremely controversial. Something's either controversial or it isn't. You can't have levels um, uh, of controversy. That's by definition. But anyway, you know, he's he's American, so he doesn't know what he's doing. It's not his fucking first language, is it? <laughs> um, that's just for all you North American listeners. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, Striper. Stripe, shocking and really controversial. Okay, so um, shocking would be um, if there's any good songs on it. I'll put that out there. And controversial would be renouncing Jesus and um, and singing about Satan. And um, I can't see either of those happening. So, you know, let's, let's wait and see what really controversial and shocking albums Striper are going to be. I mean, do me a fucking favour. It is... I mean, I've talked about this before, but it is one of those bands, you know, trying to to drum up interest in in, in a new album. That has got to be the lamest yet, the lamest of them all. Um, to, speaking of lame, um, who's been lame? Me, 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 completely. Um, I, um, as the kids call it, I got triggered on social media. Um, well, did I get, did I get triggered? Right. Apparently that's what the kids say. Triggered. You know, somebody set, me- they didn't set me off. Basically, um, uh, Acid Rain had its, uh, the Acid Rain page, which, um, I a- administrate most of the time, not all the time. Um, uh, which I admin is, uh, we had our first real live, um, troll. First real live troll. Um, Philip Malone. Um, you know, there you go. He's worth naming. Um, and um, well, he's not worth. He's a fucking waste of flesh and cells. But you know, there you go. Um, yeah, me, me not bothered. So, so uh, basically, um, whenever I admin the Facebook page, I'll, I'll ne- there's no point getting involved. You know, there's no point getting involved in a um, in an argument. And it 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 wasn't so much an argument. It was just basically. He, he steamed onto the page and just started um, uh, started uh, kind of slagging us off, basically. And and I just responded very passively, not passive aggressive, but I, I always respond with positivity and with love, which I know doesn't sound like me at all, um, but I do because I you know there's no point arguing on social media. And uh, he was saying how unsuccessful Acid Rain is and all the rest of it. And and, and um, so I posted a picture taken from the stage of Bloodstock of, you know, the tent with five and a half thousand people in it, absolutely rammed. And I just popped that up there and said, here's um, here's a picture of uh, all uh, here's a picture of all these people who don't turn up to our shows. And, uh, and, and another Acid, uh, an Acid Rain fan posted a comment saying, boom. And it was like, ha ha, victory is mine. And he just comes back with, ah, there's only two hundred and three. There is only two or two or three hundred people in that. Blah blah blah, and then goes off on another topic. And what I should have done, looking back, is right there, I should have just gone, right. There's no point here. This guy is purely in it for irritation and distance. That's all he's in it for, because I have just produced some facts. I've produced a picture which is there's clearly thousands of people there and he's just written it off by just saying basically doing a Donald Trump just saying oh no that's two or three hundred people and then moving on establishing uh, establishing as far as he's concerned establishing a fact which enables him to change 
the narrative of, of what's been said because he's kind of looked at it and he's thought, right, okay, um, I, I, I've lost there. I'll just change the subject. A bit like, and I know I'm going to sound sexist, but a bit like arguing with a woman. Um, if it looks like you're about to win the, um, and that you have actually got the point, uh, that you've got a point and you're actually right, um, the direction of the argument will change. So in other words, you know, if you're arguing about... Um, a state of the garage, and you can prove that you or garage, and you can prove that you've um, that you've tidied up or whatever, and and that then it'll be, and your fucking clothes are all over the floor in the bedroom. You think, well, hang on, hang on, I thought we were arguing about the garage. Anyway, uh, probably let you all in and more than you care to know about me there. So it, yeah, uh, tangent. Um, as soon as I, as soon as he wrote that picture off. I should have just ceased engagement there and gone, oh, right, this is a, this is a proper troll. But I didn't, and, um, and we kept talking. And, he, and what was great was he, was, he was saying, I love how angry you're getting. And I was, and I was like posting back and saying, not angry at all. There's nothing, nothing but love here, little love heart. And, and then he started, he said, I'm getting all of this. And he was posting screenshots of our, of our, um, responses which which I really didn't think was worth doing I didn't think there was like you know I I, I wasn't getting angry um but then again you think well I wonder if the I wonder if the posts look angry because there's no context there and he was yeah so he's posting <laughs> screenshots of of conversations we've already had um and it just got to the point where I just went do you know what and I just I, I was on the app on my phone and I just highlighted his, pre, his last comment and it just said delete and ban user and it was just like yeah it's just I'm done here I'm done so I got suckered in um, it, it, it does happen but the these people are just insane it's really because they're, they're not you know they're they're it's almost like the the object is or what they really want is they want you to delete their comments they um they want you to ban them he'll then be all over social media going oh yeah i got got ba- got banned from um from the anti rain page oh I, I, oh I took him on i won yeah oh it was great oh and of course you know you or i posting that on facebook you know most of your friends are going to go um well you're a bit of a knob aren't you you've just been trolling but of course his mates will be other trolls. They'll probably all be posting screenshots of various pages that they've managed to get banned from. They'll be it'll be like a fucking badge of honour for them. Um, but you know, I, I it, it was just one of those things where I just thought this is really, yeah, you know, next time lesson learned, I'm out. I'm out. Okay, so hot on the heels of. The um, the reformation of the Galactic Cowboys, hot on the heels of the New Living Colour album. Um, sorry, um, yeah, hot <laughs> is that's right. The breaking, the, not breaking news. The wonderful news that Ugly Kid Joe have reformed. Yes. Oh, I mean, and and you know, you would be wrong and inaccurate if you said they were a one hit wonder apparently you would be but i'm saying one hit wonder i mean how many times are they going to play that song um oh something about you i can't even fucking remember it i mean i know how it went but what really one hit wonders coming back now really fucking hell um and and back to living color actually i have to say that um uh, I was tweeted by an Acid Rain fan who was at a Living Colour gig saying that he was like, you know, repping the band with his new Acid Rain t-shirt on, which was very cool. And and Living Colour liked the tweet. Um, so, um, so yeah, you know, basically I'm a cunt. Um, so uh, no news there. No change there. Um, right. I've been gibbering on for, uh, for coming up 20 minutes. Um uh, there is. I, I was going to tell. Um, I was going to tell a story of. Um, uh, uh, I met one of my heroes um, within the last month, who turned out to be a dick. Um, that whole story is going on Patreon. I don't really want to put it up here. Um, so, and and I'm I'm not doing that to try and generate guys to go. Oh right, no, oh, I will sign up for that Patreon thing. It's just it's it's a little bit sensitive, so I'm not I'm not putting it up here. Um, anyway. Um, it's time for an interview and it's time for um second interview friend of the show because i say so 
Um, well, he is because he texted me uh, the address of a really cool um, uh, Brazilian restaurant to go to. Brazilian? Brazilian restaurant to go to, um, which was very cool. And that's just like, you know, yeah. I got a text from Igor, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, and that is who the interview is with. And you'll probably already, well, you know that because you've read the intro and all the rest. Anyway, I'm fucking being around the bush. Here is myself and Igor Cavaliura, Cavaliura, Caval, here's, here's myself and, okay. Oh dear. Um, here is myself and Igor Cavaliera having a chat just a couple of weeks ago. And I've actually forgotten to mention something. Um, well done. Um, uh, during all of that, what I forgot to mention was I am going to be doing my um, uh, uh, spoken word show. I'm going to be doing a spoken word show. Not exactly talking bollocks on the road. There'll be a lot of sort of old acid rain stories from back in the day. But um, yeah, it, it'll still be me talking shit. Talking bollocks, talking acid rain. Um, and that is taking place on uh, December the 15th at the Sanctuary Rock Bar in Burnley. So if you want to get along for some live bollocks in your ears, um, then that's uh, that's what to do. I will, um, I will post a link. It is on the uh, Talking Bollocks Facebook page and... Um, uh, I, I will post a link, another link there to it um, after this podcast. And anyway, without further ado, over to Igor. Hello? Hi, Igor. Yes? Hello, it's um, Howard from the Talking Bollocks podcast. How are you, man? I'm very well, I'm very well. We, um, we spoke a couple of years ago, actually, Um just to remind you, I'm the guy who used to, well, who sings in Acid Rain and also does stand-up comedy. Oh, yeah, cool. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? Good, good, man. So, um, are, are you at home at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. The, the, uh, one, of, uh, one of London's only Brazilians, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of Brazilians, man. They're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's... um. Oh, God, Brazilian food, don't get me started. I know, I know, man. It's gorgeous. I'm, yeah, son of a butcher, so I love my meat, and it's like Brazilian food is just all about the meat. It is, man. There's actually a few good places in London that you can get some good Brazilian stuff. Where would you recommend? Uh, there's, there's this place called Cantina do Gaúcho, and it's amazing. I, I can later text you the uh the address oh yeah please do please do and this place is like because there's a lot of touristy kind of places that don't do a good job yeah and and charge a lot of money for it this place is proper working class brazilian uh honest price and amazing food so oh cool yes definitely definitely send me the address that's awesome yeah 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 man it's worth going a thing a visit cool Cool. Well, um, uh, look, I, I, one thing I wanted to talk about straight away was, um, have you seen the Messi hat trick yesterday? Yeah, actually, it's crazy, man, you know, because he had such a crazy story. Yeah, He left Ar Argentina so early, so a lot of people in Argentina hate him. Yeah. You know? uh, even, like, the last time I think he was on his neighborhood, somebody punched him. Like in, in Rosario, where he was born. So it's, it's a weird combination, you know, like for him. And of course, he it's going to be his last World Cup. So I was hoping that they qualify. So, you know, they. I think it's going to be quite a challenge now for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because they, they back, back home, they kind of, they, they kind of, they call him Spanish, don't they? Yeah, but I think it's different than, you know, someone like Maradona who played a lot, a lot of the Argentinian clubs before he left to Europe or, or even a lot of the Brazilian players. He, 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 he's pretty much left too early. Yeah. So they, they don't have that connection with him where they learn to love him there and then he became somewhere else. So I think, you know, for a lot of people, he's too international, you know. Yeah, and and also they they've always claimed that he he like he doesn't do it for Argentina. He does it for Barcelona, but he he never turns it on for Argentina. And he, and even when they got to the final, he was like pretty anonymous. 
Oh, here we, here we go. Right, call again. Hello. Sorry, mate. That was my. That's my phone playing up. Oh, that's no problem. Yeah, I, I just saw that we got cut off. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyway, look, everybody listening to this is going to be like, oh, for God's sake, stop talking about football. Get to the music. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, yeah, another Cavaliero conspiracy album coming out. I mean, I, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm. Are you surprised? Are you surprised that it, that you're, you know, you you're just continuing to put these albums out because Max is so so busy with so much stuff as, uh, elsewhere as well. I mean, obviously, I know it's special you two playing together, but um, where do you find the time between, like, you know, doing the Roots tour and, uh, you know, when did this album come together? That's the thing, you know, I, I think the, the, the whole Cavalera idea behind it is to find those precious moments where me and Max, we can get together and do something that we really enjoy. So we really appreciate, you know, like the, the fact that we continue writing music and we continue putting out records, which is something that for us, it's really important because we do believe in, in the music that, that we, we like to play. We do believe in the music that we listen to. So it's great. Of course, I enjoy doing a tour like Return to Roots. It's fun. But I have a lot more joy on writing something completely new, especially with my brother, which I have such a good uh, synergy and, and, and such good, I don't know, like ideas that, that just flow together so i'm really happy you know i have to say it's 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 a great record it was good to make it and we can really we're really looking forward to the tour yeah yeah well it's it's it, i mean I, I guess it's i don't want to say it's corny but is it is it almost it, is it almost just like fun when you when you come at cavalier it's just like it, it's just you guys having fun as opposed to like, you know, the pressure of a band and, and everything else. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it came to, to a point in, in our lives that we, we learn a lot from uh, our mistakes. So we just enjoy those, those moments. We know how, how short, you know, our life is. So it, it is, you know, it sounds corny, but it is, a hundred percent. We just enjoy getting together and playing music, and then, of course, by, by playing together, we find excuses to meet some of our family, bring some of our kids to to hang out. So it's it's quite special, I have to say. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can't really think of anything. I can't really. Well, certainly in metal, I can't think of any anything else like it. It's it's like you say. It's it, it's I know what you mean by using it as an excuse to go and um, uh, you know meet family and stuff because it's. I mean, I, I've just been I've just been on the road for a few days um, doing my comedy, and I, you know I've got a chance to meet up with friends who I haven't seen for a couple of years, and it, it's it, it's great to be able to to be able to do that, to be able to just catch up with people, and whilst you're at it, you know, do your thing and 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 bring you know bring joy to other people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's cool, and then of course, it's something that we know we need to work hard to to get to that point. So it's not something that it just happens. You you do need to to have a background where you can still do those things and and you can still do those tours. You know, just look how busy me and my brother we always are. We're never sitting around and just waiting for things to happen or complaining about what's going on today and living off the, you know, like a, a glorious past. It, it's different. We were super proud of what we did, but now it's the important part where we still hustling. We're still out there, you know, like doing what we had to do. So I think it's at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know, and then with hard work, you can do these things that you just mentioned where you catch up with an old friend in a city or some family members that you don't see for a long time and the fact that you're there playing your music or, or doing your art it's something that it's it's it's, it's amazing you know what i mean 
Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's yeah, it's 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 not something you get in a regular job, that's for sure. Um, and is is it kind of like a perfect balance as well? Because we you, you you're doing uh, you know you're doing roots, which obviously you know is a long time ago. But and then on the other hand, you're getting to create brand new music as well. So it's kind of like you've, you've the best of both worlds. Well, it is. I, I have to say because like I like I, I always mention, it's something that we are super connected to to our past. Uh, at the same time, can you hold on just one second? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Sorry, I'm not okay. back here. <laughs> no worries. So, so yeah, so it, it, it's something that you know, it is cool to revisit something that we're super proud, and we feel like people still think it's relevant the the music that we did a long time ago, and it's great. But uh, at the same time, there's always as a musician, you know, as a as a person. We always move forward, you know, like me and Max, we always like uh, put our energy into new things. And that's super important to, uh, to keep our spirit alive. Yeah. It's, it, it's really, I think it's, it's one of the coolest things that you can do. It, it is to continue and expressing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, otherwise, if you if you're just constantly going around and just doing the old thing, then you know you you become stagnant. You become, you know, you become a, a a tribute act of of your own career. You know. Yeah, which, to be fair, you know, like some people they do enjoy that, and that that's fine. You know, I, I don't see, you know, like a complete negative thing. It depends on really on how you do it, but for me. Personally, I, I do like the fact that you you have one feet in the past and one feet in the future, and this way you don't forget what you did, or, or you don't don't feel ashamed of things that you have done, and, and you still you, you're moving forward, and and you have ideas, and and you listen to new bands, and though all those things really push you to to continue. Yeah. Yeah, and playing the playing the old stuff um, with your brother, you know, doing the, the Roots tour. Um, when you when you kind of sat down to rehearse that, when you uh, and every night, for instance, do you, do you do you do you approach those songs? Do you go right? Okay, I'm going to get Young Eagle to play these songs, you know, or do you do you approach those songs and go right? I'm 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 going to try and bring something different to this. I'm going to obviously people will you know know what I do on these songs, but I'm I'm just going to mix it up a little because you you know you've got to keep it interesting for you. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good combination that of course. You know, like certain things that you do on, on certain records, they, they are like a signature thing that if you just don't do it, it becomes a bit weird for someone who's going to watch. But at the same time, throwing in some, some new things and throwing in some different ways of doing something that you did, it's also fun to do it. So I, I think it's a matter of, of combination. I think if you do one or the other too much it, it can become like super boring either for you who are playing or for somebody who's going to go watch where if you just com completely throw something new it, it, it's weird and also if you, for yourself if you just copy exactly like a cover band what you did it, it doesn't have any pleasure to it yeah so I, I think i think a combination of both it, it, it's cool and of course like certain things you can't leave out and then there's certain things that where you're like well maybe you know i like to believe that i i play better than i played many years ago because i keep learning new things and you know exploring new ideas so i like to throw some of those stuff in so i, I think it's fun to do both yeah yeah you kind of like you say you've got to because you, you've got to stay you've got to stay engaged you've got to kind of bring like you said the signature the signature sounds you bring from the past um but you, you're kind of you're kind of updating it at the same time and i would imagine there's a lot of subtlety in that as well there's there's stuff that you do that maybe people don't notice but it, it's in there specifically for you yeah yeah and and of course that's also the fun part where of doing certain things where for the majority of the people, they don't really, they just hear the whole thing as a song. 
And then there are, of course, like some people that would be paying attention to every detail that they would notice things here and there that are very special. So that's, that's also cool. Cause I remember being a fan of music and not really paying attention to a lot of things, but paying attention through the whole result of, of the band playing together. And that's also really cool because it, it, you do need to have that, uh, the chemistry to, to get things moving, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, um uh, well speaking of which um the one of our guitarists wanted me to ask you a question and it's it, it goes it, it's, it's going to go back a little way but um was, back in the day was there was there a chance that you were going to do a project with Mike Patton that that never quite happened and it, and it, and you know that that ended up becoming something else without you well there, there's a lot of like Mike is one of my really close friends for many many years and we always talk about doing stuff together. He he did a few things w- with Sepultura back in the days. Yeah. And even the whole Fantomas thing, I was the first guy he approached to, to play drums with Fantomas. And at the time, I remember it was just when, when the whole thing happened after Roots and my brother leaving the band. And I was like, man, I can't commit to something that crazy at that moment. <laughs> Because his first, his first idea, it was, it was insane. Like for the first record, it was like uh, reading a comic book, and each like square on the comic book would be a, a riff or a part. So at the end, there would be hundreds of, of ideas, and I was like, I don't know if I can memorize all that stuff and still focus on what I was doing. So I recommended him to call uh, Dave Lombardo at the time, and then luckily that worked and to this day like the other day i went for a for food with mike and he was saying like wow man it's been years and i remember when you told me to uh to get in touch with dave and now they've been doing a lot of stuff together even like the dead cross and but we do speak about doing music together every time we meet but at the same time our schedules are insane <laughs> so, so i hope one day we can sit down and do a proper project together you know like even me and max we spoke to him about doing something and uh it'll be cool you know he's what he's not only like one of my favorite artists of all times yeah and, but it's all he's also like a very very close friend where i can call anytime and we speak a lot about a lot of different stuff so so it'll be great to do that at one point yeah, it, w- it would be awesome because he's. I mean, he's he's completely fearless. You know, there's 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 just like if he wants to do something, he'll do something, and and that's it. And I, uh, you know, that that has to be admired. I mean, you know, what whatever he does, it's always original and it's always challenging. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of those guys that in music, I really it's it's hard to think of someone else like him who's like. It is a genius in, in many ways, but also he has the balls to, you know, to just go and do whatever he thinks it, it's, it's right. And yeah. that can be from, you know, doing something like Mondo Cane, which is like Italian music from the 50s, to, uh, I don't know, to that cross, which is like, I remember when he showed me the, the demos, he was like, oh, I promise you're not going to laugh too hard at this. And, and I was like, no, this is pretty cool. But at first he was like, oh, man, you're going to hate this, you know. And I was like, no, this is awesome stuff. And he was like, man, I haven't done something hardcore in, like, forever. So, yeah, we, we have that kind of relationship, which is it's really cool. And uh, when, when he showed me the stuff, I was like, man, it, it's, it's great. And, and now people all seen it. It's a great band. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of it's just one of those things that uh, it it got to a it got to a stage where it was just like, right, is this you know, you keep hearing about stuff in the press and you just wonder if it's ever going to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's finally happened, and uh, and and he he um, made a guest appearance on your Roots tour as well, didn't he? He popped up and guested with you. Yeah, yeah. Like when we played San Francisco last last time. He, he did a song with us and it was like, again, like I went for dinner with him and he was like, yeah, I'll come to the show, you know, because at first we we're like, dude, let's just hang out. You don't need to come to the show. Fuck that. 
<laughs> you know, we're, we're more friends than music. Yeah. And then he came to the show, and then the minute he walked in the tour bus, Max was like, dude, should we do something? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So when we play Look Away, Max called him on stage, and, and he did the song, and then he was like, oh, I don't think I remember. And he remembered everything. So <laughs> he's that kind of a guy, too. You know, he was like, I, at the end, I was like, you bastard, you said you didn't remember, you know every word you motherfucker so he's <laughs> he's that amazing you know yeah yeah I, I i i i know the feeling i know the feeling of of god like, no i'm not going to remember and then it, it just like literally seconds before you're about to sing you, you you're racking your brain thinking i i don't know what's happening and then and then the words just come out almost like remote yeah. you know it's yeah. like oh shit i do know this yeah so it was cool it was, it was a lot of fun to do that with him Oh, that's cool, man. So, um, is um, is is mix hell still a thing? Yeah, I, I still do a lot of stuff. Of course, this year was very complicated because I submitted to do this band called Sowax from uh, Belgium, and we tour a lot with that. And then I had to put mix hell a bit of on a hold, and then a lot of the roots uh, dates also showed up. So it's a slow year, but. Next year, I'm I'm gonna pay a little more attention to Mixel because it's it's like again, it's something that I really enjoy, you know, like doing something different and experimenting with different sounds and things. I mean, yeah, musically, would you say that this is kind of like a, a real sweet spot in your career at the moment, where you're getting to do you're getting to do all sorts of different stuff. You're visiting the past, you're making new heavy music, you're doing the soul wax thing, then you can you know, you can move on to mix hell once you once the schedule frees up a bit. Is I mean, this is this is kinda like it's it's almost like a every musician's dream, right? It is. It, if to be fair, you know, and then at the end also I only do stuff with people that I love. You know, like I, I don't do it for any other reason. You know, all the projects that I, I'm involved, it is with people that I really enjoy spending every second with them. So that also pays off at the end where you do make the right choices and those things, they're priceless, you know, getting to, to hang out with, with people and learn a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and and presumably as well, it's you're it's constantly you know you're constantly moving forward and being challenged. It's 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 developing your skills in in all areas as well. Yeah, and it's it's important, you know, like to, to push those limits and and not always being right. You know, there, there's a lot of also errors and, and and things that you learn from it, and, and that's great, you know. And I, like stuff like Mix Hell, for example, I know most of the Sepultura fans or Cavalera fans, they don't understand. And, and that's 100% fine, you know. And that, that's cool because it, it, that's not the reason I do it. I do it for completely other ideas. And, and, and if people get into it, fine. If they don't, that, that's also super fine. Yeah, yeah, and but uh, I, I I bet there's I bet there's people out there that have followed your career and and have discovered you know like electronic music and um and, and all of that stuff through just following what you do and going hey well this isn't metal but you know I kind of like it. Yeah, that that's also cool because it is it is something that it's it's important for for me to push. Those, those limits and we always done that we even like in the back in the old days we were always trying to try different things and push a little bit so our fans would discover a little more stuff in different layers of uh, music on what we were doing oh absolutely i mean well that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of what roots is all about isn't it i mean that's uh, i mean you know look i Chaos I Chaos AD for me is 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 an absolutely legendary album. Um uh and but then Roots came out and just kind of just challenged everything really. Yeah, and, and to be fair, we, we got a lot of uh, there's a lot of hate on it also. Yeah. It's not just everyone going like, Oh, it's amazing. There's a lot of people who it's their least favourite record. 
Yeah. So so that's cool also because it, it is about that. It is about challenging and not playing safe and, and being comfortable on, on what you're doing. Well, unless for any reaction is better than no reaction. The last thing you want to hear from anybody is indifference, isn't it? But, you know, better better they love it or hate it than just go, no, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So we, we know that as a fact. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's kind of like... It, it, it's strange as well because obviously it, it was kind of like the beginning of the end for the band as well. It, 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 it You kind of... You know, musically musically you were you you were all absolutely it seemed at least that you were all absolutely on the same page with that record and yet by the end of the tour you know from a you know internally it, it just it just wasn't working anymore yeah yeah and and it's again you know things happen for for whatever reason and we learn from that you know like the fact that me and max now when we play we try to eliminate all the drama that goes around with touring and making music and that was something that at that time we didn't pay attention to it drama was a big part of it and now we're like man it's so stupid that <laughs> we yeah. have to get, you, get to that level but again you know we learn for those things and, and that's that's something that could happen to any family any brothers and, and sisters and things like that Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but also it's like, you know, it can happen to any band as well. I mean, you know, you you, you have those arguments and those fallouts and everything, and then, unfortunately, you know, you... you, you you we, we you know youth do not have you know don't have wisdom. It's not until you get older and when you realise, well, oh, none of that shit matters. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, you know, we're still here and, and we can still do stuff, you know. It, it's not like, for example, I look at the brothers, like, like uh, Dimebag uh, yeah. and Vinny where unfortunately they, they cannot do this you know Yeah. one of them is not here anymore so I, at the same time I feel very lucky that me and my brother we're still healthy we're still doing our thing and we can still get you to do these things you know because we know also how short those things can be yeah yeah absolutely um, are you, are you going to be are you, so are you going to be on the road for most of next year then yeah, yeah. It's it's it looks like it's going to be quite busy with a lot of things going on. So and then this year also there's a lot of all the way to uh, Christmas a lot of gigs. So it's non-stop, man. Yeah, you're back um you're back at the forum in December. I'm coming along to that with um with Overkill in support. That's a that is a weird yet killer bill. Yeah, it should be fun, you know, like it's cool, you know. We got of course like our plan wasn't to do roots again and then we got the offer to do it and and that's cool you know it's a cool tour a lot of cool bands so it should be fun yeah i know it's it's kind of like do you think is is that going to be is that going to be the end of roots is this going to be the last kind of yeah the the, the last tour i think so i'm, I'm not a hundred percent but uh, you know like we already trying to focus all the energy on the new couple era and then that means like touring heavily for that. So I don't think we're going to do roots in between the Cavalera thing. I think we're going to focus 100% on, on, on the new Cavalera. Yeah, yeah. And presumably when it comes to the end of Cavalera, then you, you, you go off and do your, you know, back to, to, to Mix Hell and and, uh, and then Max will pick up with, with Soulfly as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the idea behind it. It's so we can always find our time in between projects to, to do Cavalera. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's kind of, it's weird. Cause you, I mean, you, and, you and your brother, have, obviously you had a, you know, many years when you weren't working together and yet you've been, you've been back together for some time now. And, and, um, this is, this is the fourth Cavalera album, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the fourth record. And it's like each with each one. There's there's it, it's kind of strange because it's it, it's 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 brutal music. But with each one, there's a different feel to it. Is that is that just is that just what happens in the room? Yeah, it, it is a reflection on where where we are at, at the moment on the, all those records. You know, nothing nothing more than that. You know, it's like the ideas and what we're listening to, and, and all reflects on that. So, you know, that there is. 
different phases and different ideas through through times you know yeah yeah and um on a completely different note do you um do you get back to brazil much i i wish i could go more you know but again you know being busy it's it's hard so uh, i'm hoping that i can do christmas in brazil to see some of my uh, relatives and stuff that... And if not, I'll, I'll try to find some time next year to, to do it. But I, I try to go at least twice a year to, to see my mom and, and see some, you know, some of my family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you when when you are back in Brazil, is there is there any that that temptation to think, oh man, you know what? It'd be it'd be so good to be to be living here again. I don't know. I mean, I, I never really lived. I always moved around, you know. So for me, if if at the right time it would be cool to be back in Brazil, it would be fine. Right now, I don't really see it. You know, I'm really enjoying what we have here in London. The fact that it's easy for me to move around, to, to do all the stuff I have to do, because that's one of the problems of me in Brazil. It, it's the distance. It, it becomes a bit of a problem. So, yeah. So this is cool. But... Then again, I don't know where I'm going to be in a few years. You know, I have no idea. Right now, it's great. You lived, um, you lived for a lot of years in the states as well. Um, uh, is, is 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 that something that you would um, it would do again? Or uh, mind you, with uh, <laughs> with Trump in charge, you might not get you, you might not be allowed. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Because it, it it is becoming crazy there, crazier than than ever. So I don't know. It's so much tension going on. But then again, everywhere in the world, it's 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 insane. It's bizarre. So, it's bizarre times right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's insane. So it, again, I I don't know if I would live in the U.S. again. But then again, for me, a city like New York. It, it, it's a city that I really like. Yeah, so I, I can see myself living there, and and then again, that's a very different city from the rest of uh, the U.S. Yeah, it's almost like its own thing, you know. So it is one of the places that I consider if I ever go somewhere, I, I would go to New York. Yeah, yeah, no, it's an awesome place, man. I've been I've been a few times and. Uh, Every time I go, I'm just kind of like. Every time I go, it's like the first time. Yeah, I love it. I, and same way I love London or São Paulo. I, I do enjoy the the energy of those big cities, you know. Yeah, absolutely. There is there is something about a big city. There's something about I you know I love that busy street. The any time of the day you can just go out and do something. Yeah, yeah, it's it's important. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's but yeah. I mean, you how how long have you been in London now? It's almost four years. Right. Okay. Cool. So you're you 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 really becoming a Londoner now. You are you managing to understand all of the um, all of the Cockney accents? Well, most of it, but it, it's funny though, you know, because you do learn a, a new thing every day. So. <laughs> Ooh, and then of course, like the, my my kids going to school here, they they learn even more. So they need to be up with uh, the slangs and things that, that are happening. Oh. I a little bit from them too. I was just going to say, I bet you learn. I bet you learn stuff from them all the time. Yeah, yeah, more than anything else, because you know, I do hang out with a lot of people from London, but I think they experience a lot more than me. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to um, uh, I want to ask you was: Would you, um, if you were approached, would you consider doing some um, uh, a soundtrack? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big soundtrack collector. I, I do love soundtrack, and not not only soundtrack, but also a lot of the sound design. It, it's amazing, like. You know, like the stuff that I was just checking out, the new uh, Twin Peaks, where a lot of the sound design that David Lynch did, it's it's insane. It's so good. Yeah. So it's something that 
I would be a hundred percent into it. But then again, it needs to happen for the right people. It can't. You cannot force those things to happen. Yeah. So, but it, it's something that I'm I'm a hundred percent into it. Like I buy records of soundtracks and and look into a lot of different producers who who mainly do a lot of music for 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 movies and and for for visual things. So it's it's something that it's quite cool. It is. It's. I mean, it's called sound design for a reason, right? I mean, it is just. It's another world. It. It. it, yeah. it you know, and and not and not every musician can do it or or, or wants to do it because it's. It, I mean, it is just like you're you're there to serve. You're there to serve pictures. It's not. It's not music for music's sake, which most of us are used to making. It's a completely yeah. different approach. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I think there is a, a strong relation in between them. Even when you're writing like a super uh, fast song, or you do have a cinematic thing in your head where you know, like you can see people moving to your music to to certain things. So you do somehow make it to a certain extent, like music for 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 different you know environments and, and things like that even without noticing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I go back to Twin Peaks. Um, uh, Angelo, Angelo Badlamenti is an, is an absolute legend. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, his he, stuff he is stuff. amazing. Yeah, and, and I do also like the, the rawness of some of like Lynch stuff where he's just, he just picks up the, you know, like the sense and, and try weird stuff with it. I think the combination of both, it's amazing, which is like he's such a talented producer with someone that is more like a, I don't know, like an artist or, or a visionary like Lynch. So I think that's why it worked out so well, you know. Well, Lynch is the man who put Rammstein on a soundtrack when like most of the world still didn't know who the fuck they were. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a visionary in, in a lot of different ways, you know, and he has a really cool based off uh, for music from you know like from the the guests he had on the show to whatever music he picks for his soundtracks it's it's really cool to see that he's he's up to date with a lot of things that are happening yeah and still and still pushing the envelope still moving things forward still you know trying new stuff i mean bring it you know 25 years between the last series of twin peaks it's like only only david lynch would do that yeah, and I, I like the fact that it wasn't that easy to digest. Well, you can, you can you say know, that okay. again. Yeah, because it, it was like a lot of people couldn't get it. And coming from an American, I, I think that's that's super important that he was doing stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be explained. Where in the U.S. there's a big tendency, especially in movies, to explain too much and, and detail things too much so you don't think at the end. Yeah. So I think he does leave a lot of space for you to think for yourself, and, and that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it can be, it can be in, interpreted, and it's, a, it, it's almost as, a, like with music, you know, there's no need to explain lyrics because they'll mean something different to everybody who listens to them. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's really cool because I, I think... You know, an artist who who's not scared again of doing something like that. It's it's amazing to see. Yeah, and but like you said, it's something that it's something that you can't force. Soundtrack stuff. It's kind of like you know, it, it, it's you the the it's got to be involved with the right people, the right project, and presumably it's something that you just kind of sort of sit there and hope comes along one day. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, well, you never know. Your man Patton again. We're back to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's been, he's been doing a few things. Yeah, he's. I mean, he does voiceovers and all sorts of shit. Yeah, he. I really enjoyed the stuff he did with the the place between the what, what was that movie with the same guy who did Blade Runner now that the yeah actor. Um, Ryan Gosling. Uh, the, was it the place between the pines? Yeah, yeah, he did the soundtrack for that pattern. Yeah. And then, then now he was telling me he's involved, I think, in, in the new 
like one series with uh, maybe Stephen King or something like and he's doing some music so it's going to be quite cool too oh wow I've I'm, yeah. I've I've not heard about I've, I haven't heard anything about that anywhere. Are you sure you should be telling me that? Yeah, man. It's you know he just told, mentioned it, but I think he's he's quite working on it, so it should be cool. Oh, that's awesome! That is awesome. Fucking hell! I, I, it, it's it, it's it's amazing that the all of the people that you meet over the years, the the amount of contacts that you've built up, um, and you know the the projects that you've been involved with over the years. It is, it, you know, do you, do you look into the future and go, well, like I definitely want to do that and that, or is it just a case of, man, whatever happens, happens. Let's just enjoy the ride. Yeah, I mean, of course, you need to push for certain things, but at the same time, they will happen for a reason, and and they would, they will connect somehow at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Well, look, um, it's it's been a pleasure as always, Ego. I'm I'm, you know, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Um, Thank you, I, brother. Yeah. No problem. No, no. no problem. I will. Um, I will see you. Um, I- at the forum in December. Awesome, brother. Yeah, yeah, man. That'll be cool. And please do me a favor. Text me that Brazilian restaurant address. Yeah, I'll do it. But once we we hang up here, I'll send you that, man. So you, you you're gonna enjoy that for sure. I am indeed. I am. Thank you very much, man. Look, can, can enjoy the roots thing. Good luck with the uh, with the album and the tour um, and everything else. And you know, uh, let's catch up in another couple of years. All right, thanks, brother. See you soon, man. Cool. No problem. See ya. And there you have my chat with Igor. Um, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, it, it's um, yeah, it's it, it just a really easy guy to talk to. Um, and um, I am. It, it, I've got to want to be honest with you guys. Um, we very nearly had a Cavaliera conspiracy special um, for um, October because I had Max lined up as an interview as well. And Max has been the interview. I don't know. I've, I've been going to interview him a couple of times and Gloria as well. And it could just, and it's just never come off. And um, I was going to interview him and it was a Thursday night. And during the day, uh, I got a call from um uh, a comedy booker saying, look, are you, are you available tonight? Um, well, I got a call. I didn't. No one ever gets calls anymore, do you? I got I got a fucking email <laughs> saying um, they reached out to me <laughs> um, saying, look, are you available tonight? Um, got a spot that needs to fill. Uh, and, it was, and uh, you know, it pays. So um, I had to, um, unfortunately, I had to uh, bow out of the interview. Of course, if I was getting, uh, you know, shit tons of money from Patreon, I'd have turned the comedy gig down. So just get over to Patreon and sign up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I know, I, I, I keep mentioning it. Sorry, I'll try not to. Um, online begging. Never thought I'd be doing it. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's just a really, you know, a, um, a really cool guy to talk to. Um, I am hopefully still going to get Max on that my, um, but, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. I really don't. Um, so to be kept informed of who's coming on the show, uh, sign up at patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. It's like there's advertising on the podcast. It's just it's me advertising me. But let's face it, that's pretty much what I've been doing since this started. So um, uh, I still like that the the, uh, the title of one of the iTunes reviews of the podcast that says... Fun times with self-aware egomania. Uh, yeah, uh, fun times with self-aware egomaniac. Um, I do think that is funny. Um, which, by the way, if you feel like writing a review of the podcast, um, either good or shit, nothing, you know, nothing in between, you know, um, please don't be one of these people who goes, oh, when I saw these podcasts for three hours, I thought, when am I going to get a chance to listen to that? Not realising that, I don't know, you might be able to find three hours over the course of a whole fucking month. A whole month! You don't have to listen to it all at once. It's not a movie. Um, anyway, um, download it over Wi-Fi if you have a uh, limited data. So, yes. Um, yes, do 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 that. Um, uh, make sure if you have limited data, you use Wi-Fi and all other interesting bits and pieces. Um, so what's been going on? Um, 
Pumpkins United is uh, is kicking off, which is um, uh, Halloween with both vocalists, uh, Kai Hansen and Michael Kisk. So um, uh, uh, Kai Hansen's already come out and said that uh, admitted to using uh, pre-recorded vocals um, on one of the shows. Don't know if that's the case, but uh, great, yeah. Um, I mean, he's admitted to it. I don't know how I felt about that. I don't know. I mean, at least at least he deserves points for honesty, I guess. But um, yeah, it just seems a bit needless, really. Um, but having said that, if you um, if you dig out the song Pumpkins United on uh, YouTube, oh man, some of the worst lyrics you are ever ever going to see in your life. They're just absolutely shocking, absolutely fucking shocking. Um, but you know, there you go. Um, so, um, uh, somebody approached me about, uh, why don't you do uh, a limited edition run of, um, acid rain, Moshkinstein demos. It's 30 years old. Why don't you do a limited, uh, cassette run? Um, tape, tapes are back. And, uh, my response to that was, uh, no, and no, they're not. Um, Vinyl is only three percent of the music uh, of music sales across the world. Um, tapes doesn't even move the needle. But yet again, it was a very convincing, um, uh, a very convincing and not pushy, which I liked. But it was a very, um, it was it was well reasoned as um, as an idea. Um, it's just all of, it's just that it was lacking facts and um, it was it was one of those old people say things like tapes are back like oh well that's it there you go that's the statement tapes are back I'm stating that you can't argue with that and of course you can um, no they're not uh, a lot of people don't have tape players they may want it just for, for a souvenir but there's a lot better souvenirs and a lot cheaper souvenirs frankly that we could make um, and um, as it is, it took nearly two years to sell the fucking seven inch vinyls we had. So God knows how long it would take to sell a fucking cassette. But again, it was one of those pitches whereby you could just I could just tell, you know, I really want you to do this because I really want an anniversary copy of the demo. If you're Metallica. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, damn, I'm going to have to get some water for that. Um. If you're Metallica, yeah, you can do a copy of the No Life Till Leather demo. Of course you can. People are going, people are going to fucking go crazy over that. But we're Acid Rain. Do you know what I mean? It's like it, whatever we put out, we, we, we're going to be lucky if anybody watches it. So watches it, listens to it. So you know, tapes. No, but again, that reasoned argument and oh, this is why you should do it. Blah blah blah. And I just think, well, yeah, but why don't you put in there as well? I want you to do this. You know, I'd really like one. I'd buy one. And so would all my friends, which is the other classic, um, which is like, well, that's great. That's that's nine copies sold. Um, uh, but again, it comes back to that thing we've always talked about. But, you know, people's humble brags about, oh, I buy all my music when they don't. They just want to come across. People use social media to be the person they want to be. And, and you know, they want to look, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm righteous. Yeah, I buy all my music. No, you don't. Simple as that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying everybody who says they buy all the music is lying. I'm saying there is a percentage of the people out there, especially in public notice boards like band pages and stuff like that, that say all sorts of shit that isn't true. For instance, as, uh, as someone else was telling me the other day, um, uh, someone bragging about gigs back in the 80s, thrash gigs back in the 80s, um, that he knew they weren't at. That's, this is this is this has gone to a whole new level. This is now people bragging about having been at gigs they weren't actually at. This is not humble bragging. This is humble lying. It's just fucking unbelievable that people would. I mean, how how desperate does your life have to be to lie about shit like that? It's just it's just it just boggles my fucking mind absolutely fucking boggles my mind. Anyway, um, I have jibber-jabbered um, enough. Let's get into um, uh, another podcast. Now, uh, this one is was, was supposed to happen, oh my God, um, years and years, well, at, at, least, at least a year, I would say, um, that, that I've been, I've been, trying to sort this out um and this is uh matthew frock frocks <laughs> sorry matthew this is um this is matthew fox um from shy halud um and uh you check the band out um it's about shy s-h-a-i halud is h-u-l-u-d um very cool band 
and uh, Matthew is a long time Acid Rain fan. Yes, there are some outside of the UK. So uh, I apologise for the Acid Rain chat in advance. Some of you will like it, some of you won't, but this is an awesome chat. Hour and 15 minutes, we, and, and we, we could have gone on and on if I wasn't having to go out and do a gig that night. Um, so this is my chat with Matthew Fox from the wonderful Shy Hulud, uh just a, about, about a week ago. But this is the internet, and you could be listening to this in years to come. So a week ago is of no relevance to you whatsoever. So, fellow person travelling in time who exists in the future and is listening to this in some weird year, like 2050, and Blade Runner is now a documentary as opposed to a movie. Oh, went to see Blade Runner 2049, really, really loved it. Although occasionally the soundtrack is a bit like... He's fallen asleep on his keyboard, but um, other than that, it is quite slow, but it's worth getting in. Anyway, fuck it. I've now gone off and done a film review before (laughs) introducing Matthew Fox from Shy Halud. Enjoy. Yay! There he is. Hello. Hello, sir. How you doing? I am very well. How are you? Ah, not too bad, man. Awesome. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for calling. Can you hear me? Am I yelling at you or anything? <laughs> no, I, it's it. Don't worry. I've I've mastered the technology apart from Skype um, crashing on me a couple of times. But other than that, we're good. Oh, okay, cool. Ah, I see this. Uh, I guess your new guitar player in the background it's got a nice violent shirt. Oh, where's oh, oh right? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. You're looking at that image. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's that's. Um, that's Cookie. We're, we're all we're all big violence fans, actually. Both guitars. How could? Um, yeah. How could you not be? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, and it's just it's just heartbreaking what's happening to to Sean at the moment. You know what? I I only heard a little bit. What uh, what's going on exactly? Um, he has um, he has liver failure, basically slow but sure liver yeah. failure. Um, and, um, and they're, they're just waiting for a, um, uh, they're waiting for a, a donor if they can find one in time. Holy fuck. Is there, um, are, are there social media pages, GoFundMes or anything that I can yeah, there, share to help? There, there are, I think, um, I'm, I'm also, I'm involved with a, with a guy where, um, we're, we're looking at doing an EP called Killian on Command. Um, uh-huh. And it's nice. uh, yeah, a bunch of us are all going to get together and um, uh, and do some do some violent songs, um, and and you know put it out as an EP and try and get you know basically all of the um, all of the the proceeds to the family. Um, if you need my help or if I can be a part of it in any way, my my time is is yours or Sean's. Awesome, both. yeah. Um, I will. Well, uh, there's a guy called Dave Ingram who's. Funnily enough, on a couple of podcasts ago, which is when we were talking about it, um, and I think he's getting um, he, he's getting it all together. So uh, I will um, I'll I'll pass your details on, and um, let's take it from there. Awesome, poor guy, man. I know, I know, and it, I mean, you know, it, you wouldn't recognise him in pictures. It, it's uh, ah. it's it's quite frightening. It really ah. is. Um, Sorry to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Absolutely. So, anyway, dude, um, <laughs> it always amazes me. It always amazes me that anybody outside the UK likes acid rain. <laughs> uh, you know, naming your first EP Moshkenstein was a, a stroke of fucking brilliance. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I, I found you guys the same way I found uh, every metal band, whether it was from the UK, Australia, or the United States. I'm just looking through uh, the metal section on cassette. You know, Acid Rain. It's got, the logo's got spikes. It's called Moshkenstein. Okay, I'm buying this. (laughs) You know, it was, and that's how I bought it. I had, I'd never heard of you. I'd never heard the music. Yeah. I bought it on cassette. You couldn't listen to it first. Yeah. And uh, brought it home. It's, and now I'm talking to you as a, a fan for over 20 years. That's mad. That's insane. But you're right. That's exactly that's exactly how we um, how we used to discover bands back in the day. I mean, if you know the picture on the back of the um, on the back of the um, 
out uh, of of that EP, there's you know there's somebody with a better suicide. I think it's Ramsey's got a suicidal tendencies baseball cap on. Yeah, I did exactly what you did with Moskenstein with suicidal tendencies. Well, apart from I just saw people wearing suicidal shirts and thought, right, this is a band I need to be into. Um, that, that, yeah, that's how we all did it. And, and it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, it's kind of beautiful, really. <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> you know? a, yeah, it's a, it's a lost art. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I'm into Misfits are one of my favorite bands. You know, who, who do you think I have to thank for that? Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe Metallica, maybe Cliff Burton. Yeah, Cliff Burton, Metallica, you know. Uh, and whatever, I saw Voivod wearing a Discharge shirt. Now I love Discharge, you know. So. Yeah. Well, that was that was why I wore a Descendants shirt. I wanted people, you know, it's like they, they're um, an absolute world away from thrash metal but you know you want to spread the word of bands you like and the amount of people that come up to me at shows and stuff and say because of you i'm into the descendants you know and, yeah and, and it's just that's so cool yeah and that's that's exactly what i've been doing for geez 20 years that i've been playing in this band already uh but my guitar you know um People say this is you got such a nice guitar. Why are you ruining it with stickers? <laughs> ruining it? What are you talking about? I'm 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 showing people what they should be checking out. You know, I'm showing somebody their new favorite band. Yeah. And uh, you know, when we were on tour, I, I'm sure it's the same thing for you guys. Every once in a while, a clothing, you know, some sh- shitty clothing company wants you to wear their shirt, uh, <laughs> and I, I would always pass it along to the other guys. I'd say, hey, if you want to wear this. You know they're sponsoring us, whatever the hell that means. But I'm not wearing it because I'm wearing my fishbone shirt because people need to know about fishbone. Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it's all yeah, it's, it's all it's all carefully coordinated. <laughs> it, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, if I'm at home, what I wear is sweatpants and the first shirt I pick. When I'm on tour, I, I you know I pick. Every every tour, my nuclear assault shirt comes. My uh, violence, eternal nightmare, coroner. You know all the shit that I think people really need. Descendants need to be hearing. Yeah, have you got and, a... and it works because you know everybody's like ten, twenty years younger than us. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is spreading it to uh, a, a, a new the new school. Absolutely, the new and <laughs> not to be such a cynic or a pessimist, but. The new the new school needs some lessons from the old school. <laughs> oh hell yes! Oh, oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely desperately yeah. So have you got an acid rain? Know. Have you got an acid rain shirt? Uh, I have a friend named Rachel. I don't know if you know her. Do you? Is that Rachel Floyd? Does that sound familiar? Um, she doesn't. I'm afraid no. Oh okay. Uh, she never said that she knew you, but she went and saw you guys, and we. She and I have been talking about acid rain for 10 years now. She bought me a shirt. She got me a large, and it fits me like a small. <laughs> I don't know if I got fat. I don't know what the hell's going on. Ah. I'm, looking at it. I'm looking at it right now, April Fool's Tour. But, man, I put it on once, and, uh, you know, like I couldn't breathe. But. Oh, shit. It, so it was, it was one from the, the last tour we did. Yeah, yeah. She just she bought it for me and sent it to me the next day. Oh man, I wish I'd I wish I'd have known. She should have said uh, uh, that's. Oh wow. Okay. Um, well, I, look, we'll have to do something about that. Um, well, I'll I'll send this back to you. Um, you know, because it's been paid for. She bought it. Uh, it's a large. The only thing is, I, I tore the tag out. I don't know. If you... yeah, no, no, don't 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 worry about it. Those, but you you have got. We don't have one single one of those shirts left. So. Um, uh yeah just just keep just keep hold of it but um uh i've got lots of um uh i've got lots of the man who became himself shirts so um you'll have to you'll have to send me your address and i'll send you one ah then absolutely that's awesome and and the ep is great oh oh so you've heard the new stuff then oh yeah of course as soon as uh you know, I'm a fanboy. I, 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 I'm 44, <laughs> and I'll be a fanboy at 64 of a- anything that I love. You know, I have no shame. If I love it, if it makes an impact, I love it. Yeah. So as soon as you guys 
I don't know if I if I caught on right when you came back, but you had posted. I don't even know how I found it, but there was an acid rain mug. I said, "Holy fuck, an acid rain mug!" And that's when I saw that you were on Twitter and started catching up. And I think shortly after that, I saw that you put out a new EP. So of course, I went straight to your favorite app, iTunes, and picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know, it, it's 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 available everywhere. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I man. got it. I got it from iTunes. <laughs> um, so, so you have both the new tracks then? Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I, you know, I, I I don't know them by heart the way I know the old uh, stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, Goddess, of course. Of course. But um, yeah, I, the the few times I've listened to them, I said, "Fuck." as it rained in 2017 or 2016 it's great i love it yeah it's uh it, it, it's kind of different but um you know we're just plowing our plowing our own little furrow so did you um did you did you get into the fear and obnoxious as well or was it just moshkinstein uh moshkinstein and the fear were the two that i knew the most i the first cd that i found of you guys was obnoxious which i still have Ah. Um, yeah, so that was the the first one that I found on CD, and I don't think that I knew that it had come out, so I bought it. But that, if there's one that I'm the least familiar with, it's that one. Right, okay. Um, well, but, and it, not for it, yeah. any reason of its quality. Uh, it, it came out at a time where I wasn't listening to CDs. Uh, I, 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 I should probably just rip it and take a listen to it on my computer uh, <laughs> well it's it's so. also it also cha- there's a slight stylistical change as well between oh yeah between that album and the and moshkinstein and the fear um yeah well you know gaz who went on to do cathedral was was probably the main writer on the first two albums um and then and then you know he's not on the third album so there's it, it, it i mean it's still very much it's still very much acid rain i mean it was, it was my it's my personal favorite album, but um, uh, it's yeah. Oh, it's... Obnoxious? Your your favorite? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I can't I, I can't listen to Moshkinstein because my performance is um, as uh, um, to use a professional term, fucking shit. Uh, ah, yeah, fucking shit. That's, yeah, yeah, that's very yeah. Very professional of you. Yeah, I can't listen to my performance on that, and um, the, the 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 fear has got some fucking crazy musical moments on it um yeah the, the fear rips um i i know what you're saying uh about moshkin being fucking shit from your vantage point <laughs> my vantage point is that's that's my introduction you know uh, oh absolutely uh, I, yeah <laughs> yeah no i know where yeah, you, I, I know where you're coming from that's your first love yeah I, oh, and I, I just pulled out um obnoxious i love the the pink cover <laughs> great yeah, so, that that yeah. was that 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 believe it or not was second choice because they they turned down our um uh the artwork that we offered up as a, a as uh, as an album cover. So, oh, yeah. um, so we, what was it? The original artwork for Smell the Glove? Uh not quite. Um it was <laughs> um it was actually you can see it online there's a, we made a t-shirt of it. Um Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the you know there's, there's a website called the T-shirt Slayer and um uh because I'm such a geek, I'm always on there, like looking at shirts and shit like that. And um, there is an acid rain section, and and there's a shirt up there. It's basically of, of a of a of a guy who just looks really fucking ugly, um, and um, and that's it really. And it was it was kind of cartoony, and it was done by Stilly Kev's brother, um, and uh, and the label said no. So we ended up with um, so we you know Ramsey suggested pink and cyan make your eyes go funny if you look at it too long. Let's just, it's, it, you know, it's really obnoxious. Let's do that instead. So I love it. That was the obnoxious. end of it. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually typing in Google right now the original art. I want to see this. Oh, you won't. You won't. You won't find. Um, it won't be listed as original art. You won't find. Oh, okay. it, you won't find it anywhere other than um, uh, someone who's got acid rain tour merch um, from from the obnoxious tour. That's the only place it appeared was on a shirt. Um, okay. And, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll suss it. I'll find it, or maybe if you have a picture, you send it over. Yeah, yeah. I think I've got one kicking about. Um, All right, but um, hey, uh, quick question. Um, you're sounding on my end a little choppy. Am I coming off choppy to you? No, you're 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 okay, mate. You're all right. 
Okay, so um, if I ask what a couple times, that's why. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Um, so look, um, I uh, I've got to I've got to ask you. Okay, I'm just going to go straight in with this. Right. Yeah. Go for it. How many fucking band members do you need? <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how many have we had or how many do we need we no, need I mean, more I'm, I need more I, I, I mean uh, I mean look if Wikipedia is to believed and you know it's, and it's not I'll, I'll just say that but go ahead alright great because according to Wikipedia you've had five fucking vocalists in 2017 yeah um, here's the thing I mean, you know, you know how Wikipedia works, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, uh, you know, that's that's why I said, you know, anything on Wikipedia is to be taken with a truckload of salt. Yeah, I, uh, um, I, I think a lot of people like to joke around, and I, I'm pretty. Although people, some people will disagree. I'm pretty easygoing. You can, I, I don't give a shit about stuff like that. You know, I don't look at the Wikipedia page and update it or anything. But a lot of the members that you see, first of all, I can't remember who it was. It wasn't like Fred Flintstone or something, but it was something of that caliber, you know, that I saw was in the band. And I'm like, oh, great. All right. So Fred Flintstone's playing with us now, too. That's perfect. Uh, you know, uh, not only are there some names that would obviously never have been in the band, um, there are people that, uh, hey, our bass player's sick. He's going to, or this guy's going to his friend's wedding. Could, you think you could fill in for this show? Yeah, sure. That guy's listed as a band member. Right, okay. And so, uh, and with this last tour that we did, when we were just in the UK last year, uh, the singer that we had that recorded our last EP um, that was supposed to be in the band, we were going to go gung-ho, he ended up getting uh, a killer job, and he says, yeah, I, uh, I can't do the tour, and I think... I think I got to bow out. Perfect. Awesome. All right. <laughs> we leave in three weeks. Sure. What do I got to do? I, so I found a singer. Now he's part of the band. I mean, not in, in actuality, but uh, on Wikipedia for sure. So <laughs> right. take, take it with, like you said, a chuckload of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fucking hell, you should have got me in, mate. I'd, I would have done it. No problem. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm booking. I'm. I'm going to book a tour now. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, yeah. Fuck. I remember. I uh, there was. I was going to try and get to one of your shows, but there was. A, I. I think I was. I was doing my own shows, but comedy gets in the way all the time. I was supposed to be. Um, um, I, I was, I'm supposed to be at the Brixton Academy tonight seeing Gary Newman because a friend of mine, the guy who produced um, the man who became himself, Jace Lewis, is support to Gary Newman tonight, but. I got a last minute comedy show come up, so I'm I'm going to do that, you know, bills to pay, etc. Um, yeah. So um, so and it, and yeah, the amount of things I've missed I, I missed because I'm fucking gigging is just untrue. But you know, listen, you didn't miss much. And had I known that you were playing that or you know performing comedy that night, I there's a great chance I would have left my show to come see you. <laughs> Oh, you're 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 flattering me too much now, Matt. You really are. Oh, I've got... No, I'm just I'm just telling you our show. Uh, we man, I don't know what happened. Well, of course I know what happened. You know, it was like 15 years ago. Uh, you know, years ago we had what is it? You got your 15 minutes of fame. I think we got about like a a minute 45 minutes of fame. Right. And uh, when we would play London, it was like a, a madhouse. Uh, but after that minute 45, whew, <laughs> every show that we play in London is like, uh, I mean, literally uh, 10 to 20 people max, unless we're opening for a bigger band. Fucking hell, really? So, yeah, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, lo I, I love know. London, regardless. I know, I, I, no, I, know, I know what you mean. I mean, yeah, yeah, we had, we had that experience. Not, not that bad, but we... Yeah, we, saw, we we had we had, uh, we had a, a, an experience like that um, on uh, on the April Fools' tour. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Southampton and Bristol weren't great, um, but um, as you will see on the soon to be released tour documentary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be just posted on the internet or an actual DVD or something? No, no. We'll just we we post everything, shows, docs, docs, everything. We just post it all for free on YouTube. 
Oh, cool. I'll I'll be there to check it out. Cool, man. It's just it's just going to be about an hour of us swearing and playing and playing pranks on each other. That, that's uh, perfect because that's exactly what I want to see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, let's face it. It's 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 what touring's all about, isn't it? It's basically you've got to do stuff to relieve the boredom. So it's basically taking yeah. the, taking the piss out of everybody. Um, just trying to just trying to have a laugh and kind of stay motivated whilst fuck all happens. Yeah, and, and even from a fan's perspective, like uh, I'm sure, I think you and I are probably close in age. When Cliff Amal came out, yeah, sure, we loved the, we loved the live videos, but it was like you know the shit of them stealing from Seven <laughs> Eleven, you know, absolutely. All, all the, those are the fun bits. Those are the parts you've been waiting for. So, well, let's just take out the music altogether. Oh yeah, well, well, that is. I mean, I think there's probably only three songs in the whole documentary. Which I mean, I haven't seen it yet because it's not quite finished. But I know, right. I know, I think there's only about three songs in the whole thing. Um, and it is just because basically, you know, if if you want to see the songs from the tour, just go on YouTube. They're there. So there's no point in put you know in putting a documentary together with footage that's already out there anyway. Um, oh. Oh, I so, agree. It's it already sounds better than most of the movie uh, the music DVDs I have already. So I'm I'm in. Oh well, well you, you there, there's one up already. There's a doc of our previous tour. Uh, well, of the first oh. of the first tour back um, called No Sleep Till Nunnington, um, and that is that's basically about an hour of us fucking about and breaking beds and shit. Oh, cool. I'll, I'll, I haven't seen that. I'll check that out first then. All right, cool, man. I'll I'll send you a link so you don't have to go searching. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all right, no problem. So, um, so what what are you doing with the band at the moment? Um, and also, again, I mean, when you because you said the singer's in the band, but kind of not really. It, it there seems to be a sort of perception that the band is just kind of basically a mainstay of two of you. Correct. And <laughs> you know. You know, it's uh, you're quite clearly not the Dave Mustaine of the band. Um, <laughs> you know, um, how did you end up in that situation? You know, is the originals just kind of dropped out one by one, and 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 it's just kind of, you know, you, you just yeah. get people it hasn't won. That, that's exactly it. You know, first of all, probably like you, but I think I think I was a little older. Um, didn't you start Acid Rain as a teenager? Yeah, at school, yeah. Okay, I, I it took me a little while to get into a band that was good. Um, you know, I played in, fuck, my, my, I had a thrash band called Unwillful Demise, formerly known as Evil Alive. Uh, oh. And, you know, we would play the South Florida scene. Uh, we, we were not great. Um, but then, you know, years, I, I remember I, did, I joined my friend's like ska punk band. And when that ended, I said, okay, I guess that's my, my music career is over. And I went to school to be a theater teacher. Uh, all the while, I was going to try to be an actor. My two loves were always like, movies and theater and music, particularly metal. So anyway, while I'm in college, my, I had various friends that didn't know each other, but I knew all of them. And this guy sang, this guy played bass, this guy played drums, this guy played guitar. And that's how it started, uh, me having conversations with individuals saying, hey, you know, we should start a band. And they're all saying it to me. And then by the time I realized, holy shit, I've got a whole band together and these guys don't even know it. I said, hey, I think I got something here. And, and that's how the, the collection started. And uh, just like you said, throughout the years, we never made a lot of money, and money is an, always a defining factor. I don't know what led to the breakup uh, originally of you guys, but you know we had like a slight taste of, and, and I mean slight, slight taste of success. And uh, my, myself and Matt Fletcher, the two mainstays, we didn't want to let it go. So we're, you know, hey, you want to join the band? If people want to join? Yes, that's great. Uh, but hey, we can pay you like uh, cookies and cream, basically. Um, and that, la that, that leads to some of the legitimate entries on Wikipedia, because if you're on tour and you're pushing it as hard as we were trying to push it, just so we could get back to where we were, whatever year this was, 
it, 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 somebody's not going to stay long if, if the money isn't there. And the money with Shai Hulud has never been there, unfortunately. And that's been probably our, our biggest problem in keeping members, uh, as opposed to what a lot of people think, which is there is tons of internal fighting. Right. So... That's the that's the best I got. But you're right. Yeah. So so it's 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 a lot of dude. I'd love to keep doing this, but I've got bills to pay. Uh, we've we heard that constantly. Um, yeah. Sometimes not put so kindly, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but basically, you know, are you however nice or not nice it was? It's, yeah. You know. All right. So. I toured for fucking four months this year with you, and I got a per diem every day. Thank you. But now what? You know, I, I can't justify this to my mother, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my dog. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and yeah. That's, uh, that was what happened. And, of course, there was some internal fighting. I don't know about you guys, or, but, uh, you know, we've had a, a, quite a few characters. Because when you're desperate... He'll take anybody. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, in, in in our desperation to keep moving, because that was. Uh, feel free to cut me off if I'm. No, 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 fuck no. This is this is this, <laughs> this is what this is what I and you know and people want to hear. You know what I mean? It's like you know. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh, well, I, I can ramble on, but just don't hesitate to shut me up. No, not but, at all. Uh, this is this is a nice easy interview for me. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Yeah, well, I listened to the, uh, you know, Mina Caputo one. That was good. Oh, you, you, you had to do very little work. Oh, man. Uh, it was, yeah, I think, I think that was half an hour, and I think I managed about four questions. Yeah. Oh, she was great, though. That was... Uh, oh, totally. That was, that was the first interview with her that I had seen, and uh, I was really happy to hear how down-to-earth and uh, you can see how gentle she is. By nature, so absolutely. Really, well, well, two weeks yeah. ago, to, uh, two I think two weeks ago tonight or three weeks ago, I, I went to see them at the Electric Ballroom in um, in Camden, and yeah. um, I ended up having a chat with um, for the podcast with Joey Z, and um, and I had tried to I had tried to get a kind of meaner follow up because she did say you know when you're in town you know when we're in town come by and say hello. So, yeah. um, so I had to pass my hello. I had to get Joey to pass my hello on. Um, but uh, right. you know, I'm always I'm always amazed when people uh, have have heard of Acid Rain. I mean, I, I just interviewed yeah. um, I interviewed uh, Igor Cavaliera a couple of days ago, and it's the second time I've interviewed him. Um, right. So I was able to say hi. It's Howard from Acid Rain again, and he was like, "Oh, cool, man. How are you, brother?" And um, it was weird because the first time I interviewed him, and I said like Acid Rain, he goes, "Yeah, I remember you guys. Yeah," and I was just like, "This is fucking ridiculous." I'm talking to Igor Cavaliera, and he yeah, and uh, he, you know, he remembers my band. What the fuck? No, that's awesome. Well, first of all, I think that you may understate how cool your band really is. You know, <laughs> uh, that that's just my opinion. I mean, I was the one that was kind of giving acid rain to everybody in South Florida. That's where, you know, I, that's where I, I live, where I grew up. Yeah. So, you know, all my friends, it, it, it was the same thing. They see the, the logo. First of all, the name is fucking awesome. <laughs> all the, right, cool. the logo is awesome. And you had something called Moschenstein. And, and it's little metalheads. I don't know if this was the same in England for you guys, but hardcore was always cooler than metal. So your hardcore friends would make fun of you for, you know, being like a Slayer guy and not listening to Dead Kennedy. So here comes Moschenstein and it's UK Apple Corps. So this was like as close as little metalheads could get into right. hardcore. You know? right. I mean, okay. it was like, I, I don't, I'm sure it was just accidental on your part, but the marketing of that EP was perfect. And again, the music is awesome. And just the whole concept of the band, it, it really can't be understated. Oh, uh, that's, uh, very, that's very, very cool shit you guys did. That, well, man, that's very cool. And funnily enough, uh, you listed a band who inspired the name Moschkinstein. Moschkinstein is basically, I was working in a record shop and um, uh, I uh, was you know, a big Dead Kennedys fan. So I was, I was like 
completing my collection, and I got Frank in Christ. And from Frank in Christ, you get Moshkin Stein. Oh, nice. God, that's brilliant. Ha! Yeah. That might be that might be the coolest thing that I now know about your band. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. You know, I was just working in the shop one day, and I was just thinking, well, um, I, I just thought Frank in Christ was a fucking brilliant album title. And I was it like, is. right, well, well, if they've used Franken, uh, how about I use Stein instead? Right, what can we put on the front? And like, you know, Mosh was the word of the time in the circles uh, that, you know, that, that, that I mixed in. And it was just like, yeah, fuck it, Moshkin Stein, that'll do. That's awesome. You got to let, uh, try to get Jello on the podcast and let oh, him know that. Oh, man. I'd, <laughs> I'd, if I could get Jello on the podcast, that would be the last podcast I ever did because I wouldn't feel the need to do any more. Um, yeah. You know, they'd, they'd all feel like a letdown if I, if, uh, uh, after Jello. I mean, that would just be fucking amazing, you know? Um, yeah. He's definitely a vocal hero of mine. Um, just so I don't forget, just to go back, even though yes. it was a much later topic. No, no, go, uh, go, go, go. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, there was always a little bit of an, uh, I, I, I guess you could say an argument or maybe just a difference of opinion, but Matt Fletcher, our bass player, who is, you know, hasn't done anything with us in a while except for help write the last ET, but he's, you know, uh, I was talking to him about new stuff that I was writing. He's ah, cool, I'll send some shit over. He, what I like, uh, just a sidetrack here, what I like about Matt Fletcher, who he, he's more of a friend than anything. So he's a bandmate because he's a friend. And I think that within Shai Hulud, we had fewer of those than we should have. And, and, and that also, I think, contributes to the, contributed to the problem. Um, but so going back, Fletcher's concept was, hey, let's, why don't we take some time and really focus on getting solid members and not just finding these bullshit guys to fill in only to replace them three weeks later on the next tour and uh, unknowingly <laughs> adding to our Wikipedia list. Uh, whereas my, what I wanted to do is, like I said, I, I don't know if it was greediness on my part. Maybe I had tasted that, uh, you know, uh, 30 seconds of, of success. And I said, no way, man. We're, tra- we're on a train. We're going this fast. You're welcome to join the band, but fucking hop on, motherfucker. Let's go. You know, there's, we're not slowing down for you or for anybody. Yeah. And in, in retrospect, that concept is great. If you can pay for the the service, yeah, which we couldn't. So, um, in, in retrospect, I, I would even concede that Fletcher was right. Instead of doing what I wanted to do, was okay. This guy doesn't want to sing. Let's find somebody else. We got a tour in three weeks. I don't know. Maybe sh- should we cancel? Fuck no, we're not canceling. We're gonna. I'm gonna find somebody. Uh, and and in retrospect, that may not have been the right idea. What can I tell you? I made a mistake. Yeah, but you know, it's it's like ultimately, I, I I'm I'm kind of the same. You know, it 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 wouldn't. I'd not that I've been in a position like that. Um, well, kind of. I mean, you know, Gaz fucked off halfway through a tour, um, so that was awkward. Um, but but it was cool because we got John Conley from Nuclear Assault to stand in for him. So that was all right. Fuck yeah. Yeah yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. So we went from like. Went from the the shittest thing that had happened in the band's career at that point to oh this is really fucking cool we've got John Connolly on rhythm guitar, <laughs> um, but um, wow. but yeah I I I it, it's I I've got that the show must go on for f- you know fuck it you know and it, it, it basically you know anything that gets any any wrench that gets thrown in the works it's just like yeah right okay that's just another thing to deal with you know. And, 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 you know, I guess that's being focused, you know? Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> it, it could be. And, and here's, here's something interesting. I talked to, uh, maybe you know of her. She's kind of um, the go-to woman to uh, learn how to scream. Her name is Melissa Croft. Have you heard of Melissa Croft? I have not heard of Melissa Croft, no. Oh, well, I, I, she's a dear friend of mine and a dear friend of a lot of metalheads. <clears throat> she's got a couple DVDs out. She 
she teaches you how to save your voice and how to help you create the scream without destroying yourself. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the reason I bring her up is last time I had a lesson because I was even considering, I wanted to do more of like a discharge type project, you know, crust bunk where hardcore kids go to die, <laughs> uh, yeah. and, which is really true. And it's not a, it's not a bad cemetery. I, I'll happily stay there. But, um, so I was entertaining singing and I was talking to this lady and she said, why have you had so many singers? She says, you really don't seem impossible to me, <laughs> which was a wonderful, beautiful compliment. Thank you. But, um, you know, I, I told her basically what I told you. I'm on a train. She says, did you ever study theater? I said, well, I mean, that was my major in college. She goes, that's why. She goes, you've got to, you're results oriented. You want to yeah. go. And yeah. any problem is, okay, that's the problem. How do we fix it? Because we're on at eight. And I, I don't know that she's correct. I'd like to think so because it's a nice, you know, it's a nice way to put it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's exactly how I felt. All right. So what happened at six o'clock, you know, all of our guitars are broken and we've all got broken legs too. Okay. We go on a date. How are we going to make this happen? And by eight o'clock, you know, we're sitting in wheelchairs with, and we're borrowing the headliner's guitar to play the show. You know, I mean, it, that's just, that's what you got to do. Or at least that's what I think a band should do rather than, you know, this guy picked his nose too hard and then now it's bleeding. So we got to cancel the show. I've never done that ever. Yeah. So. Now, <laughs> I, no, I, 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 I absolutely get that though, because that does remind that, that it, I, I mean, uh, I don't know if I, I guess it's, years in comedy as well where it's kind of like you know the, sh the show must go on although that doesn't always. although that doesn't really always apply in comedy believe it or not um oh, no. no because you you have you have to have um <laughs> you have to have a certain amount of people to to actually make it worthwhile um comedy is a comedy is a gang sport you know sure. you, you 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 need you need you know, X amount of people before you can actually make it happen. Otherwise, it's just a fucking social experiment. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of different um, on on that on that kind of way. But um, but I know exactly what you mean. Um, oh, yeah. by, by the way, I've just sent you a link to the uh, the tour doc. Oh, nice. Cool. No uh, worries, I'll, man. I'll definitely give that a listen. But yeah, that, that, that show must go on mentality <clears throat> is, uh, I, I mean, I, I, but you know what? Now it's definitely a little bit refined because I tried that, that, that approach and the results weren't great. But I would always joke around with a couple members, you know, that would say, uh, that would make excuses for something. And I'd say, you know what? If this was a Broadway show, you'd be fired. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's true. But the problem was Shailud is very far removed from Broadway show. And, you know, on Broadway, you're getting paid big money. So, you know, there, there went that theory right out the window. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it, I, I mean, it, 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 it just keeps coming back to the same thing, which is, yeah. which is basically if, if you want a, le a certain level of commitment from people, um, you've got to be able to give them something in return. <laughs> You, you really have to. There's, there's just no two ways about it. So, um, you know, from here and to the future, well, uh, I've already decided for myself anyway that um, touring full-time, and by full-time, full-time to me is, you know, roughly six months a year. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't want to do that anymore. So if, if we played a couple weeks every year, and did some fests <clears throat> and some, you know, shows in certain areas where people like us. I think that will be a, a good place for for Shagalu to reside. That's, uh, you know, given age and the history and everything. I think that's what we'll end up doing, which will be a lot easier to facilitate, especially monetarily to be paying um, all of us something that makes it, if not worthwhile, at least no one's going to be, you know, hating themselves for doing something. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, so, so, <laughs> so does that mean does that mean you're never coming back to London then? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, I don't know how to answer that without uh, I, bullshitting I, you. Yeah, uh, I, know, I, I know, I know. That was a fucking horrible question. <laughs> no, but it's, it's it's a great one. I, I would love to come back to London, but I don't know if any promoter would. If we were opening for another band, it would be fine. Yeah. But yeah, for a headline, you'd have to be an asshole to <laughs> take a chance yeah. based on our recent history there. It's yeah, terrible. it's one of those, you'd love to come back to London, but does London want you to come back? Yeah, well, I, I can think of a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> well, one right here. I've got my hand in the air. All right, well, look at that. See, so uh, get like 15 more people yeah. charged. <laughs> uh, who knows? But... Uh, no, it's not out of the question, but um, I, I I love Europe. I absolutely love it. I love Germany. I I love France. I I love fucking Greece. I love the UK. I love Iceland. Go, going to Europe to me is always it, it, it has never been a chore. It's always been a pleasure. And there are a lot of people in America that I know that tour. And, oh God. We've got like three weeks in Europe, you know, and to me, that's mind blowing. Yeah. Whether we're in a bus or just in a sprinter, I don't know. It's always a fucking trip. I really love going to Europe. So I, to answer the question as best as I can, honestly, I hope we'll be playing London because I enjoy being in Europe so very much. Uh, and, and London, despite <laughs> the turnout, uh, London particularly, because, you know, and when you're on tour in Europe uh, as an American and you're playing in places where people don't speak English uh, as a first language, which is still fine. I love all these, uh, every other country. But then if like London is your, you know, I don't know, the first show. It's, of it, your, it's, it's, it's your home. It's your home from home. You can relax. Yes, it's like you don't yes. have, you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to spend mental energy thinking how you're going to get the next sentence out exactly and so it's it, it, yeah it's a home away from home and uh yeah i i I'm just at risk of repeating myself i love europe so much that i'll do anything that i can uh within reason you know to make sure that we get back at least once every couple of years well, I'm, I, I, I'm locked. Vice versa. I mean, I would, I'd fucking love to play the states. This band has, this band has never played the states. We've never even. Not been, what? Nope. We've never even been close to playing any shows in, um, in the USA, um, or North America as a whole. So, you know, um, we, yeah. were, we were offered a tour. We were offered um, a nine-day tour of South America. Um, uh, just when we came back a couple of years ago, um, but the promoter. Did you go? No, we didn't. Uh, our agent was kind of like, well, it, our agent was basically, um, this guy has said, look, I've done this tour, this tour, this tour. You know, you can speak to those people. You can reference me, and so we referenced with about five different um, uh, managers of these bands, and three were like, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, it was it was okay, and and sorry, no, three were like. Yeah, it was a shit show, and two were <laughs> and two were like, well, you know, it wasn't great, but it, you know, it, 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 he got the job done. And she was like, well, you know, ultimately, do you want to be his next guinea pigs, or should we just leave it a while? Um, <clears throat> so, Good question. But we've but we've just um, we've just changed live agent actually, um, and so we're now with K two, who who funnily enough have like you know. We've got Gajira and Metallica and Slayer and all the rest of it. So we're hoping to get to do more of Europe um, once we get a new album out, which will be next year. Um, hey, God. So, yeah, any, any time, man, any time. I, I, <laughs> I think it's the other way around, isn't it? I think you should be fucking taking us out. Oh, God, no. I'm telling you. Well, you know what? I'm sure. How about all the UK dates? <laughs> You're taking us. And maybe in Serbia, where for some reason, I love Serbia. We have a great following. We're, you know, we'll take you there. Okay, um, but, oh, uh, awesome. Hey, so Ser- Serbia is, is your old school, inverted commas, big in Japan, is it? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't, man. Bulgaria, Serbia, the shows there were fucking awesome. The people, there was a lot of people, and uh, they were all, even, you, you could tell that there were quite a few that didn't know who we were, but they all had a great fucking time, and it was, it was awesome. Serbia, though, I think, I remember a lot of people really going crazy, singing along, knowing all the lyrics and such. So that, that was a special place. Ah, man, like I said, even in Europe, we played some, some shows uh, in you know, smaller countries where they're like Slovenia, for one. A good friend of mine uh, lives out there, and he puts on our shows when we play there. I think the turnout was like, you know, maybe 10, 20 people. But the show, it, it was one of my favorites of the tour because those 10 people were there to see Shai Halou. They knew who we were and the music had impacted them. So, you know, they made that show. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they put on the show for us, you know, like yeah. we were the ones entertained. Yeah. So that, that kind of numbers don't matter to me. I, I tend to weigh or gauge uh, the success of the show by the enthusiasm and the, I, I don't know, contentment or pleasure that everyone in the room shares. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always a little bum out when you go to the, the merch. And it's like, what'd you sell? Uh, you know, a sticker. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> fine. <clears throat> but at least, you know, the, the show has left a really good feeling with me. And uh, I, I, I always return to those places, even if the money, even if logically the money doesn't justify it, the emotion does. Right. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, and, no, absolutely. And that's, uh, I've always been more of a, a feeling person than a thinking person, which probably gotten me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know that's that's the uh, that's the nature of um, of us artists, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it really is. It really is. Would you consider yourself more of a a feeler than a thinker? Um, I don't no, I, I, That's a weird one, actually. Um, well, certainly, certainly the the lyrics that I've got written for for the next album so far are a lot more internal and a lot more about. Um, um, uh, than back in the day because of course I was 19 when I was writing lyrics you know 18, 19, 20 when I was writing lyrics back in the day and you know it's, you, you tend to you tend to kind of it, it, you're, you're just projecting about the world you know you're, you, you know I was writing about everything else whereas now I tend to write about um, you know what's going on in my head or what you know what I think about things and how I and or rather more about how I feel about things rather than how I think about things um, yeah. But when it comes to the band, um, I'm very much a kind of, I suppose I go on, I, I don't know, I've always just kind of known what to do. I mean, you know, I was 17 when I got the band signed to Music for Nations. And to me, it just right. seemed obvious, you know, you get some money together, you spend half the money on the studio, you spend half the money on the packaging, you make your demo tape look like it's already on a fucking label with a full colour cover and everything else. Then you get all of your albums, your thrash albums out, and and you just send a copy of that tape to every label who are in your record collection. And then you sit back and then... Ten days later, you send out a press release to remind them that they've got this really fucking cool release that they should, they should dig out. And um, and and then Music for Nations rang up and said, you know, we want to sign you. And I was kind of like, yeah, well, that's that's what this process was meant to do. Lovely. Next. Uh, well, hey, you're hired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was just weird, you know. I mean, I've, I've always had a plan for things. I mean, I knew we, we were we were offered the. We were offered the um, the headline slot on the Saturday at Bloodstock um, at the um, on and, and and that was that was 2016, and we were offered that I I, I was I was there in 2015 at, 20, at Bloodstock 2015, and that's when it was first mentioned to us, and I was like that would be an awesome slot. Yes, we'd love to do that, and um, uh, and and then of course there's just loads of fucking around until it's actually confirmed, but. Um, as soon as they as soon as they said that, I thought, right, that's when we'll debut Thoughtful Sleep live, which is the big 
Um, it's the big ballad from uh, that's on Obnoxious, which is one of our biggest songs, and um, and I just kind of knew straight away, right? This time next year, that's when we'll debut that live, um, and and yeah, I don't know. I, it's just kind of I've I've always got a plan, and I I I don't know if I think about it or if I just go with the, you know go with how I feel, but okay. yeah. yeah. It's just well, it's it's worked so far. Whatever the fuck's going on, so um... well, good for you. Like I said, <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. You're hired. Uh, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll we'll get to work. I, I mean, I'm I'm not an idiot, but I will make illogical decisions because of uh, heart. You know, like um, hey, this one. Uh, this guy's got a house show. They could pay us fifty dollars, and it's three hours out of the way, and that puts tomorrow's drive at eight hours instead of two hours. You want to do it? Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> you know, I, right? Th- that's those are the kinds of decisions I make. We get to play another place. They want us to go there. Like they want. Uh, I'm in. Let's go. Ah, uh, and right. those aren't necessarily the smartest decisions. No, I've got, I've, I've got you. No, no, yeah, my, I've got you. fuck no. My reply. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, See, yeah. I, I need. We need you. <laughs> oh dear, it's uh, no. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I'm just, but also, you know, I've been doing stand up for twenty years. You know, and um, when it, right. when it's just you and you know, it's like someone says, "Oh, I've got a gig here. Here's the money. Do you want to do it?" I don't have to fucking, you know, I don't. You, you don't have to ask four other people. Do you want to do it? Are you available? Blah, blah, blah. You just go, yes or no. Um, yeah. You know, and, and so I think it's kind of like 20 years of discipline of uh, of just going like, right, I'll do that. Yep, yeah, do that. No, not doing that. And, and it's just kind of, I don't know. It just doesn't take me very long at all to look at something and go, no. I mean, I'm, our agent offered, told us about a festival. And she was like, oh, you know, Luke, do you want to do this? And I was like, okay, what's the money? When is it? Where is it? Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. And you know, I didn't. I didn't have to think about it, and I just completely. And the funny thing is, I then went back to the band next time we rehearsed, and I said, "Oh, by the way, just so you know, we were offered this. Um, uh, it was here. It was this money. Blah blah blah. And then there's this. There's this. There's this. And they're the reasons why I said no. And they all just went, "Yeah, good one." <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so well, that's that's awesome. See, for me. I don't know. There was always a degree, which is funny because uh, a lot of people think that don't know me that I'm extremely pessimistic and negative. And it's really quite the opposite. When we, if we would get um, an offer to play a fest for an amount of money that didn't logically work, I'd say, we got to take it. There's no way we're not going to play this huge fest that Metallica's headlining. I'm kidding about that, of course. But, you know, <laughs> there's, there's no way we're, we're not going to do this huge thing. Um, just because the money's not there. We, we need to be there. Yeah. Uh, and that might not be the way it works. You know, I mean, no, you no, go no, to the I, thing. No, I disagree. I, disagree. I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I think sometimes you have to say, look, this gig is not about the fee. This gig is about, yeah. I mean, a, a classic example, um, a band of friends of mine, I won't name because I don't know if they want this story out there, but um, sure. they were offered... Um, uh, they were offered uh, Vacuum, and um, and they, wow. you know, and they, yeah, exactly. And Vacuum basically offered them a half an hour set, um, fifty euros, and use of a dressing room for half an hour. Ah. And uh, you know, they're based, they're based uh, over here, and and it's kind of like, well, uh, and they said, but you know, we've we we're gonna have to get flights over and blah blah, blah you know, we, we our overheads are this, and and the response was. Do you want to play in front of 30,000 people or not? Exactly. And, yeah. and that's it. And I think, I'm, you know, it, it, there comes a point where you've just got to kind of go, well, mm, you know, is it worth it? Is it not? That kind of exposure. Um, and, you know, you, you just have to make it, you have to make a decision. And sometimes it's it's a painful one, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, God. Yeah, you know all yeah. about that, right? I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. So basically, this band, you're th- we're talking about one more death. No, Be, no. Tell me the truth. Uh, no, God, no, not at all, no. Um, uh, but, um, 
No, they they wouldn't mind me telling telling any stories about them, and I've got some stories. Um, uh-huh. But um, but no, it's it's not that. I'll t- when we when we when we finish up here, I'll tell you who it was. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I did want to talk to you about some uh, you know English metal. I, I fucking love onslaught as any self respecting metalhead should. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know who I fell in love with, and I just love to talk about it. In fact. Whenever we play in uh, the UK, there are two bands that I mention. I, I, and Acid Rain has been mentioned, but there's two bands that I always mention. Yeah. It's uh, Snuff, who I fucking love. I don't uh, know if you're a fan of Snuff. Uh, yeah, mate. Every, everybody had, um, I think we're alone now, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got the, their first 7-inch on display uh, in my collection right here. Right. I okay. Just, so you're, you, are, you are hardcore. Oh, I, I love snuff. And I love going to Australia and Japan because for some reason they always have these random tour EPs, <laughs> you know, that have like funny songs on them. So I've got a, a random collection of snuff EPs from Australia and Japan. But yeah, snuff is one band I love to let England know I love. And the other, who's, you know, outside of Black Sabbath might be my favorite, is Sabbath. I'm, ah, I'm massive, right. massive. Sabbath fan, right? Okay, well, I've got a boy. I've got fucking stories about Sabbath, like you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear them. All right. Have you ever had any of those guys, like Martin Walker or Sneep, on the on the show? Oh yeah, Sneep's Sneep's one of my best mates in metal. He's he, uh, there's a, there's a uh-huh. good there's a good hour long conversation. If you go back through the podcasts, yeah, you'll. You'll hear me and Sneepy. Uh, yeah, we're often in. We're, 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 we'll often WhatsApp each other various opinions about shit that's going on. Oh, nice! I, I'll definitely let that. Uh, I'll check that out. Let them know that there's some asshole in New Jersey that loves. Fucking- <laughs> uh, to, uh, also, I, I've be- got Dreamweaver. I'm looking at it right now. That's that's on display on my little record collection. I. Those first two records are are just pure fucking gold to me. Well, it, it, it it's um, to be honest, it's more for Andy. It's more um, it's more about hell these days. Um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, and, and I like hell quite a bit too. It's awesome. Um, but you know, I found Sabbath the same way I found you guys. I'm looking for something that sounds deathy and has a lot of spikes in it. And I, so I pick up, you know, a history of a time to come. I look at the witch on the cover, soul, you know, and uh, I put it on as soon as it came on. I, you hear those riffs and Martin Walker's voice. I was just like, you've got to be shitting me. Uh, still one of my favorites. And, and again, Hell is great, too. Well, I think um, I, I think a band that you should check out from a... Um from a, a hardcore point of view, see if you can find, and it might be difficult to find, fit, see if you can find anything by The Stupids. Huh, okay, i never heard of them. Yeah, yeah, they were, um, they were, they were a very cool band um, back in the day. They were really, really cool. Um, yeah, I love that band. Saw them loads of times. Kevin and I used to go to tons and tons of gigs together. Um, and uh, yeah, I must have seen them a, a, a good 10 times. Um, what what uh what years were this band around? Like early, very very sort of mid eighties. Um, I think they would oh, they, they might have been done by eighty nine. Um, so yeah, it was yeah you know, really really early days. But um, huh. they're, they're definitely worth checking out. Yeah, did they play with the you know likes of GBH and such? Um, no, not at all. They were they they weren't sort of big enough, really. They were they they're a really well kept secret. That's why I'm I'm saying like you know if you can track anything down, it's definitely yeah. worth I'll... it's definitely worth checking out. And and from a um, later eras, a band who supported us quite a few times, um, and were a, and and I went on to support them with the band in I was after Acid Rain, and um, that's a band called The Beyond. Um, their stuff oh. is quite hard to find, but the first album is called Crawl, and it is it is just you'll you won't hear anything like it. You'll love it or hate it, you really will, but you won't hear anything like it. Um, and the guy who used to drum in the Beyond has been in has been the drummer in Therapy for about fifteen twenty years. 
Oh, wow, that's killer. Uh, well, I just looked up the stupids, and I definitely found a couple things. So I'll check that out. I'll check out the beyond. Uh, look at this. I'm getting a lesson. This is great. <laughs> oh, just just sharing the love, mate. Just sharing the love. That's all. You, you I, know. I, yeah, you, I want it. I want it. I, I, I you, wish there was you want the love. I could turn. What, what's that? You want the love. I want love. <laughs> Who doesn't want love? Give me love. Please. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's always good to have new stuff to kind of dig around and go look for. I love it. Yeah, well, and, and for me personally, I really prefer new stuff to me that was from an, an older era. I, I hate to be the old guy, but I am the old guy. And I just, I really don't relate so much to newer stuff. Uh, I love newer stuff by older bands. Yeah. You know, I'm always waiting for the next Megadeth, the next Testament, the next, the, the next Overkill. Overkill and Exodus are just fucking killing it with their, la- their later albums. So, but that's what I want, um, is new stuff from older bands. New stuff from newer bands, uh, I don't know if I'm just not giving it a chance or if it's really not as good as I think it is. I, I, I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm, me. I'm always on the lookout for. Um, I was on. The, I'm always on the lookout for for new bands, and I mean, I and, and I've tried with Code Orange, and I've tried with Knock Loose, and I've tried with Hacktivist, and and um, I don't. I mean, it's my turn to sound like the old man, and I am older than you, so um, I, I will. Be, I'll be the old man in this conversation. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and and both Code Orange and Not Loose, I had heard such great things about, and I listened, and I was like, okay, uh, that's fucking heavy, and that's an awesome riff, but fuck, that is all you have, isn't it? You know, bless them. You haven't got a song, you've got a riff, and you're going to fucking play that every time you see the fucking chords. And, uh, and it was just like structures, is what I'm talking about. Like song structures just weren't there. You know, sure. just just weren't there. There was nothing that I could kind of hang on to and go right. It just seems like, it, it, you know, it's like right. The the goal of every song seems to be as heavy and shouty as possible, um, with just but fuck it structure. Now nah, we don't need any of that. Just 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 keep. You know, should we have a breakdown here? Yeah, why not? Should we have another one? Yeah, why not? Should we have another one? Yeah, but should we have a verse? Yeah, go on then. Chorus? No, not yet. Uh, and it's just like, <laughs> I, you know, I was just like, well, what the. What, what the fuck are you guys doing? You're all over the map. You know, well, write me yeah. a song. You, write me a fucking song. Uh, write a song that makes the whole world sing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, can't be- yeah, I, I mean, cannot believe you just did that. I cannot that, believe I, you just did that. When you go back, you can. it, it happened. Like, I, I can prove it. Just rewind right there. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it's so funny that you mentioned the breakdown and the chorus thing. You know, the chorus is a chorus. It's, a, it's got some importance. But I, I think particularly, and maybe I'm wrong, but particularly in the hardcore scene, you, you don't necessarily need a chorus unless it's a breakdown. But if you're going to opt to not have a chorus, at least have three breakdowns. And they could be different breakdowns. It doesn't matter. Because it's not the riff that moves you. It's the... It's honestly, it's the Pavlov's dog theory that moves you. You yeah. know, as soon as you hear this sound, you know what to do. Dinner bell rings, you get your food. You know, yeah. slow mosh riff comes, you swing your fist. So, yeah, uh, it's hard for me to relate to a lot of uh, newer stuff. Yeah, getting old stuff. But what, <laughs> um, what about live shows in, in, in the States? Is it is it as, you know... Are, are you in danger of getting sued every every gig you do? Are you are you pro barriers? Because you hear all sorts of stories over here, and I'd just be interested to get your take on it. Oh, um, awesome, awesome question. Uh, for me, I have never seen the need for a barrier. Um, you know, there, there's definitely a stigma in hardcore of people taking it too far, and I agree. Uh, I remember even back in those days that I was talking about with Unwillful Demise, I used to make flyers that said, bring your yo-yos. And the reason I said that was because I thought if everybody was practicing a yo-yo while they were watching a band, no one would have to get hurt. Right. So I never wanted anyone to get hurt. I don't want to provide the soundtrack to, you know, to quote the band Siv. Uh, I don't want to pro- uh, be your soundtrack for violence. But um, so... 
outside of a few incidents where hardcore kids, quote unquote, take it too far and do what, what again, some quotes where they call it uh, crowd killing or hate moshing. Yeah, I, I, I'm not into that shit at all. But outside of those incidents, I've never necessarily seen the need for a barrier. I think most people and anyone who knows me is going to be shocked that I'm saying this. But most people mean to be decent. I, I think there's a small minority of people that actually go to shows that want to disrupt them and want to leave somebody hurt knowing that they're the one that hurt them. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've seen, you know, your hate breeds and, uh, you know, bands that started small and went huge that played in front of barriers that really wasn't necessary. Um, it may be necessary from a venue standpoint, but I don't have that kind of, uh, I've never worked at a venue, so I don't know what their situation is. But from a band uh, uh, vantage point, I, I can't even think of a band that I know of that I'm friends with that has ever been pro barrier. I, 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 I hate the barrier personally. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look, yeah, you, it does mean that I mean, I'm talking to the singer here, so I, I don't give a fuck. Um, because I haven't, <laughs> I, I haven't got a load of gear on the stage that could get broken or trodden on and, and, and stuff. Occasionally you will get somebody who will, you know, like they don't know what they're doing. You, you get the fucking, you get the mic smashed into your teeth and that's not nice. Um, but but I'd much rather have an open door policy of look get up here and uh, actually let me tell you this story this is this, this I think this sums it up last night I did um I did a comedy show in um in a place called Combaton just outside Cambridge and it was a it was big uh, sports hall 150 people sold out um and it and and I had an absolutely awesome gig I did an encore as well it was fucking great and I went into the dressing room afterwards. Um, and uh, a guy knocked on the dressing room door and opened it up, and he said, "Oh, can I can I speak can I speak to him?" And I was like, "I was like, yeah, come in." And he came in, and he went, um, and he went, and he came walking towards me, and I thought he, he had his hand out to shake my hand, and uh, and you know, obviously, I've just done a, had a really good set, and, and and as he walks towards me, he just starts singing the first line of the first song from Obnoxious. <laughs> Nice. I know, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" And he was like, "Oh, dude!" And now all the, the and now like the headliner comedian was there, and he was like, I, "I didn't know you were in a band." And this guy's turning around to him, going, "You didn't know that he was an acid rain, fucking, you know what? Where the fuck have you been?" And I was just like, "Oh shit!" You know, don't talk to him like that. Um, you know that minute, you know that <laughs> moment where you bring somebody into the dressing room and they they act completely inappropriately, and you're going, "Right, this is on me now." Uh, I'm, sure, you know, sure. So um so and and he and he starts telling the story of seeing us uh, at the Marquee in London many times and all of the stage dive going all the stage diving going on and how it was fucking mental and all this and everything else. and it was like there's this guy who's quite clearly in his forties um him and his wife got a babysitter to come to the show because he's never seen me do my comedy act. And here he is talking about talking about like the stage chaos from back in the late eighties. And it's like that's why we do it. That's yeah, why we do it. Because that's that's just left an indelible mark on on his you know, on his memory and, and it's and it was quite clearly uh you know, these treasured childhood memories. He was like his face was lit up talking about it. And um uh and it and it was just uh, it just reminded me yet again that, you know, the, the yeah, the, this is this is why we, we you know we do it because these it, it, it's it, if people aren't going fucking mental and jumping off the stage, it for me it's 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 not a gig. Yeah, I, I mean, especially you guys being Apple Core and all, uh, you know, is that the hardcore feel is all of that interaction, and that's really what makes a gig. You, you, you know, a lot of people can see a hardcore band play, and they could be the greatest hardcore band you've ever seen. But if the crowd's not going wild, like ah, yeah, they weren't that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot yeah. of shows are are based on the the reaction, and uh, that that's one thing I think hardcore bands suffer from. But yeah, getting that type of reaction, it, it, it if you get a killer killer reaction with stage dives and sing alongs. And you're playing your guitar with three broken strings, and the the three that are left are out of tune. 
it doesn't matter what a killer show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you no, know? Ab- absolutely. <clears throat> it's it's funny because I mean, you know, we were a thrash metal band, and because we had that, damn, be- right. because we had that UK HC, that that we, I mean, I still get like asked for interviews by people who 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 think we're crossover, and and a lot of people think there's a crossover element to to Acid Rain, and I guess I don't, I guess I don't really, I don't really hear that but but we used to get a lot of punks coming to our shows and in fact Watty from the exploited was was and nice. was and is a big acid rain fan and he used to come to our shows he's because we were on the same label so he'd be on the guest list every time we play edinburgh he'd be on the guest list every single fucking time um i've still never spoken to him <laughs> um he's never, oh wow he just he'd come in about 10 minutes before we were on stage he'd sit at the back with his mates and then he'd leave as soon as we were off stage and but we always used to get punks coming to our shows and and and, and yet we talked to our friends like you know Zentrix and Onslaught and stuff like that, and they'd be like no it's just like no we don't get that and then I realized it was because the light you know our live show is is all about it it, it, it it doesn't contain that the pompous metal element of you know we're, it's all about basically who gives a fuck let's have a good let's just have a good time anything goes and and the, yeah, and the the attitude was more hardcore the attitude was that, more punk so the mu- the music was metal but because our attitude and our live shows were were like that and had that vibe that meant that we we built a punk or, following as well you 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 couldn't have nailed it any more perfectly that's i mean that's exactly how it works the band that you mentioned code orange you know they're now signed to roadrunner and those guys and girls uh, I've met, we played with them a couple times. They were always really, really nice. Uh, so I, I haven't heard much of them recorded, but they have like, all of my, not that they want it or care, but they have my respect and, and encouragement. But um, they're signed to Roadrunner. It, it's, if, you, if you would have played Code Orange to a 13-year-old me, that would have been fucking uh, maybe not thrash metal, but it would have been metal for sure. Yeah, you know. But what what makes them so relevant in the hardcore scene is the way that they invite the audience on stage, and the way the audience knows that the band is uh, accepting them, and that that's what makes the band hardcore, uh, and and that's what did it for you guys too. Uh, yeah. I think that's what did it for us because my band is very. M- musically, often not very hardcore at all. Yeah, it's just the vibe, the vibe. I know because it's it's weird. I fell into that trap of thinking you were a hardcore band before I'd heard the music, and then I was like, "Whoa, right, okay, so this isn't what I was expecting." Yeah. Who who knows? The hardcore, the, the, and also the 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 term is a, applied and misapplied. Oh my god! Here, here's a funny little story, and I don't know if we've been talking too long. If you want to go after this. But I was talking to some skinhead guy a while back, and this guy was just ready to argue and fight with anybody. Yeah. Um, I didn't know him, but uh, so he, but he started talking to me about bad brains, and um, I said, "Oh yeah, it's, that's uh, it's one of my favorite hardcore bands." He goes, "What do you mean by hardcore band?" Oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, it's. Uh, they define the hardcore to me. First of all, on a side note, my favorite hardcore record of all time is the Roar Cassette from Bad Brains. The number one, nothing comes close. Right. And it's that record that taught me how to play, if there's such a thing, hardcore guitar. So I tried to explain that to this guy, and he wasn't having it. Uh, and then we talked about another band, uh, I can't even remember. And he says, See, why do you call them a hardcore band? And everything that I said was not hardcore to him. And it had nothing to do with black or white. It was just, I think the guy was just looking to fight. But it got to a point where I stopped talking. Because I, everything that I was considering hardcore, he's saying, that's not hardcore. Right. And aside yeah. from the fact that he wanted to argue and possibly beat the shit out of somebody, uh, he was very passionate about what bands got applied the label hardcore? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I know exactly what you mean. One of those people yeah. who I think uh, Jello had a great phrase for them: "Harder core than thou." Um, uh, 
from you know. my favorite song, Triumph of the Swill. Yeah, there it is, or brother. Tri- oh, it's Chicken Ch- Conformist. Yes. Sorry. Yes, that's right. Tri- yeah, uh, Triumph of the Swill is my favorite Dick Kennedy song, but Chicken Ch- Conformist has that line. The lyrics to that song are, th- are just fucking brilliant. They are well, you know, Jello's lyrics in general. Look, we're gonna go off. We're gonna go off on another tangent, and I've just seen the time, and I need to be. Uh, I need to be out of here in fifteen minutes and on the road to my comedy show tonight. So, um, right. but look, I'm gonna finish it up, but stay on the line, and I'll uh, I'll tell you who that band was, and um, uh, uh, yeah, some other stuff. But for, but for now, because um, I'm sure we're gonna have to do this again. Um, uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was, it's been fantastic. I feel like I've known you for years. This is absolutely bizarre. Likewise. It's really well, I, weird. And the funny thing is, I have known you for years, so it's <laughs> awesome. To, it's finally awesome to meet you. You've been you've really been is. you've been stalking me for years. Yeah, you don't even want to know what I've done without your knowledge. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh dear me. Right. Okay. Let's let let's leave it there. But seriously, thanks, dude. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was my interview um, with your man. It was, um, it was, it was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, Matthew's a really easy to talk to, and and Igor has been a really easy to talk to uh, podcast. And um, yeah, we we did actually have a little bit of a chat um, uh, after after the podcast ended. Um, and I'll be doing that with uh, most of my guests from now on. Um, you'll be able to find that stuff at Patreon. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Fucking stop it, Howard. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, so we, here we are, we're coming towards the end of the podcast. What can I tell you? Um, I watched the video to, uh, Butcher Baby's head spin, which I was assured was dripping in sensuality, because that's what I want from my thrash metal. And, um, it's, I mean, it's, it is so bog standard metal. It's unbelievable. Um, it's got everything in it. It's got half naked women, um, which is not the singers actually. It's, um, there's a, there's a half naked woman in the video. Um, and, um, I mean, it'd be misogynistic if, um, if, if, if a not, you know, if if a band of guys had done it, um, uh, I'm not, it it just, yeah, it was, it it was just shit. Well, I I can't really beat around the bush here. Can I just shit, just really bog standard, um, metal and this is I think this is the problem I have with the butcher babies when they go on about they you know they're going on about thrash metal like like they're a thrash band and it's like well I'm sorry but songs like that reveal something about you the song's called headspin it is just bog standard metal it's almost a ballad um and they're and they're singing along they've both got great voices until one of them goes and it just yeah it just doesn't work for me at all because um yeah about as scary as a fucking empty bag of crisps um or chips if you're a stateside um and it's, i don't know there's uh, it's a, it's a lack of sincerity about the Butcher Babies. I think that is my problem. It's the lack of sincerity. Always constantly going on about, we're thrash and, you know, uh, and, and, and it just doesn't ring true with the music, I'm afraid. I just feel like it's insincere. Like it's, let's play this kind of music so we can get as many fans as possible. It just feels, I'm going to say it again, insincere. I can't fucking think of a better word for it. Um... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm getting angry with myself there um, because I just I can't think of a better word. But there you go. Um, so yes, um, look, I look, I really appreciate all of you guys. Um, I really do. Um, even more so now with um, setting the Patreon thing up as well. Um, uh, I will do the uh, extra podcast, um, and that will be out after the first of November. Um, so guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really do. Uh, I appreciate every single minute. That um, that I that I get in your ears, um, I really do. It's um, I mean, it's, I, I was looking on YouTube the other day, just kind of looking through all the vids and well, videos obviously, but looking at the Talking Bollocks YouTube channel, and I just can't believe there's so many of them, and that it's coming up to um, to three years. It'll be three years in January since I started out on this, and. Um, uh, as Godless pointed out to me last time we spoke, um, I wasn't, you know, the whole acid rain thing wasn't even happening. It was purely um, just 
me doing the podcast that was it and then you know you guys have come with me on that whole journey as well and it's um it's been it's been pretty amazing even though I say so myself it's been pretty crazy um but uh, so yeah there's lots lots going on lots planned um if you can make it down to the sanctuary rock bar in burnley on um december the 16th that would be awesome be good to see you um obviously there will be q and a so um if you are coming along have your questions at the ready um and um and yeah look I, like i said i i really do appreciate every single one of you um it is it's been it's been an amazing three years let's let, and i just want to keep doing this um as much as possible and for as long as possible um uh, musical tips well do you know what i am still smashing out prong zero days it is it is a great album i mean, no absolutes the previous album was an absolute cracker as well listen to that recently but um uh, Zero Days is still kicking my ass. Um, I've tried with the new Nine Inch Nails. I've tried with the new Propagandi. Both um, just not doing anything for me. Um, I was surprised by Propagandi because I like all their stuff, but I'm just finding it really difficult to try and find anything that I can kind of hold on to. And I don't know. I, I probably haven't played it enough, but Nine Inch Nails, yeah, I tried, you know. Um, I guess I haven't been on the same page as them for many years, but, uh, you know, such is life. So, whatever it is that you're doing right now, whatever it is you're doing, wherever you're listening, I just want you to take the time um, to, to just listen to this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please share the podcast everywhere you can. Please tell everybody you can about, um, about it. Even if you don't like it, slag it off, because that means that some people might... Um, although, why you'd be listening at two, hour, two and a half hours into a podcast that you don't like? Um, you fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. What are you doing here? Um, but seriously, um, all of you bollockers, um, I, I, it's, it amazes me that, that you know people even listen this far. Um, and I really do appreciate all of your support. I really do. Um, and to those of you who are not interested in signing up on Patreon, absolutely get it. That's, that's fine. You know, it, it's it, each to their own. Each to their own. I mean, what am I going to do? Get the hump. Um, it's just it's just a way of monetizing things that um, I I mean Chuck and Godless have been doing it for years and I've always I've always poked fun at them and called it online begging and um, and then uh, um, I did actually I did a I did a, a gig this month um, with comedian Bethany Black who is um, sort of um, female heavy metal comedian um, check her out wherever you, wherever you can because she's fucking awesome. Um, and we did a show in Cambridge together, a big sports hall packed out. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, oh, it was fucking immense. It really was. Um, and she was saying that she had a Patreon account and that, um, and then, and it actually worked. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And that's what kind of inspired me, um, to do this. And then funnily enough, I, I did the gig, had an absolutely cracking gig, um, and um, there was a knock on the dressing room door and this guy came in and said, oh, I just wanted to speak to this guy, pointed to me. And so, you know, the other comics thought he was coming up to say, oh, yeah, great gig. And as he walks towards me, he starts singing Creative Restraint, the first song from Obnoxious. He's walking towards me going, close your mind to control. I was like, oh, right, OK. So it's 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 not to say oh that was really funny and um uh, yeah so he just gave me a big hug and told me all about the gigs that he used to go to he hasn't managed to see the um the the, the band since we came back but um told me about all the gigs he saw back in the day and so and then all of a sudden all the comedians in the dressing room are like or oh, one of them goes like you know what are you talking about? And he's, it was, this is Ian Stone, a very, very well, one of the best comedians in the country, um, very well-known comedian. And this guy just turns around to him and goes, points at me and goes, don't you know who this is? And, and Ian's like, well, yeah, it's, it's Howard. I've known him for years. He goes, yeah, but don't you know who he is? This is H from Acid Rain. And Ian's just looking at me completely like nonplussed, like what the fuck am I supposed to do with this information? Um, uh, and basically, uh, so this guy c c uh, proceeds to explain exactly what, you know, uh, what Acid Rain is all about and how important it is to him and all the rest of it. And um, uh, and it was, <laughs> it was, so there you go. That's your your um, your reward for listening this this far is to hear that um, slightly bizarre incident that happened. And then, um, and then I realised he was quite pissed. And so it's probably best to just um, move out of the dressing room because if you, you know, dressing room is sacred 
Um, you never want to be that person who is either A, being the dick in the dressing room, or B, has invited somebody into the dressing room who is um, acting inappropriately. Uh, that, none of those things happen, but, you know, that's kind of like, you know, the dressing room etiquette for all those of you who um, have ever been in the dressing room, you know that. And if you haven't, remember that. Never be the dick. Never be the dick. And if you introduce the dick, that makes you the dick as well. So you've got to get the dicks out of there. Okay, and dick is I am using as the pejorative term. Dick can apply to a woman. Dick is a type of person who is a dick. Come on, we all know him. We all know him. You're fucking listening to one right now. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, this is just this is just rambling on. I think I might just keep this podcast going forever. Um, I mean, not not you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Look, thank you. It's been great. Um, I cannot. Uh, cannot thank you enough i'm sorry i know i keep going on about it but wherever you are wherever you're listening to this i really do appreciate it um it's been a pleasure being in your ears once again let's do it again next month ta-ta patreon patreon i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith patreon patreon I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith why don't you become a subscriber why don't you join the fun there's gonna be lots of podcast extras not for everyone but for you for you, the lovely subscriber, you're going to get lots of stuff. It's going to be great. I can't wait to make the extra podcast a little bit more for to last for a month until the next one. Patreon, Patreon, I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Howard H. Smith. Subscribe now. What the fuck am I doing?